it has led you here. Now is the time to ignite. Keep it rolling and go do something special. Let's go, baby! Unleash everything you have in your heart. Drills it into the floor. This LSU team is unstoppable. And propel yourself to new heights. You have thrived in competition. So you can do what you love fight for what you have earned. Exquisite. I just jumped out of my seat. And bring your dreams to life. Storybook ending. At the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Welcome to Fort Worth, Texas and Dickies Arena for the 2024 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. And special thanks to Emma Roberts for voicing our intro. She stars in FX's American Horror Story, Delicate Part 2, airing all new episodes Wednesdays on FX and streaming the next day on Hulu. Hello, everyone. I am John Roethlisberger, and I'm joined by Olympic champion Allie Raisman for this NCAA championship, and this is what we're looking at today. There are two sessions of this NCAA semifinal. The session coming up. LSU and Cal come in as the top two ranked teams. Alley, Arkansas and Stanford, kind of the Cinderella stories with the Tigers and the Bears being the favorites. Yeah, so LSU and Cal are the favorites to advance to the finals. They are the team that a lot of people have had their eye on this season. However, Arkansas and Stanford are peaking right now, so we can't count them out. Well, talking about the favorites, the LSU Tigers, you can't talk about them without mentioning maybe the greatest gymnast to ever put on a leotard, Haley Bryant. Yeah, Haley Bryant has the whole package. That vault is one of the best in the country. The height that she gets on that sets her apart from everyone else. Haley has the ability to get 10 on every single event. And on beam, over 180 degree split, exactly what the judges are looking for. And her floor tumbling, she does all front tumbling, which in my opinion, sets her apart from the rest of the competition. Well, right behind the LSU Tigers are the Cal Bears, and they're led by a couple of all-around stars of their own. Yeah, MJ Frazier and Maya Lazan. These two gymnasts have the whole package as well. You're gonna see a lot of incredible dynamic gymnastics from these two today. Well, we will see how those two battle it out around, along with the Cinderella stories. And to talk more about that, the third member of our team, I like to call her the straw that stirs the drink. <laughs> Taylor Davis, what you got? I'll take it. Well, Stanford season began with a list of injuries and adversity that head coach Tabitha Yim said created a resiliency in this team, the very thing that propelled them through one of the most competitive regional weekends. And Arkansas, their theme all season has been the team that did it. Translation, qualify for the first national championship since 2018. Both teams Teams may have defied the odds, but the coaches have emphasized postseason is about who maintains composure when the lights are the brightest. Thanks, Taylor. Well, the table is set. Four teams come in, only two come out. For the dream, two will end, two will continue. This is the last stop to the final destination. Competition begins next.
Welcome back as we get ready for competition here in Dickey's Arena. Here's how things are going to work. All four teams will compete simultaneously, but we'll alternate events. So you will have a chance to see every single routine two at a time. Six athletes compete on each apparatus. The lowest scores drop. And that is an important part of women's gymnastics. That means if they have a major mistake, it's not going to be the end of the day. They can drop that low score. The five highest scores count. Another thing about the postseason and the NCAA championships, six judges per event. The regular season, there is two. They go to six. The high and the low is dropped. They average the remaining four scores. The other great part about this NCAA championships is the stream team. Look at them. Every routine, you can see it right there. They're going to be covering each routine. Bridget Sloan, Sam Peshek, Anastasia Webb, Kennedy Baker, a who's who of great gymnasts. They will be paired up for a couple events each, and you can go to ESPN Plus to see it all. We've got every event and every corner of this arena covered for you. And here we go. Begin the competition. KJ Johnson from LSU will start them off on the vault. Anna Paula Gutierrez for Stanford over on the uneven bars. Yeah, on the bars, Coach Yim said that this routine makes her heart flutter because she is not afraid to go big. And on the vault right now, this is one of the best Yurchenko pulls you will see. The height on that was just fantastic. That vault is out of a 995. I watched KJ Johnson in, in practice yesterday do that vault and just stick it over and over again. Took a little hop there, Allie. You know for her, hopping on that vault is like a miss, right? I know this meet is going to come down to those little landings, but what's impressive about KJ's vault is it looks even higher in person than it does on TV. Calista Gamio now the leadoff gymnast for the Razorbacks on the balance beam. The Cal Bears, they're getting things going on the floor exercise. This is Maddie Williams on the right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, on the beam, I spoke to Coach Ross, and she told me that since freshman year, she's had a natural ability on beam to remain calm, and she's been the leadoff since. Very difficult back layout, layout step out. Such an important lineup spot, Allie, the leadoff on any event, but beam seems like even more so. Absolutely, it is crucial. She started off in the regional final and got a 9.95 in the leadoff spot. And to give you some perspective on that, that's the type of leadoff score we see from the number one ranked team, Oklahoma. That's the anchor score you see from almost every team here. To do it in a leadoff spot, man, especially here at the, the semifinals would be huge for the Razorbacks. Yeah, and this routine has been fantastic. So calm, very hard to start on the balance beam when you're nervous but handling the pressure so well. Round off, one and a half dismount. They are going to be so happy with that routine. Arkansas ranked 16 in the nation out of the regular season on balance beam. If they can come out strong, Allie, on beam, oh, all the events put up a big number there. They put themselves in a situation maybe for an upset. Trying to chase those top two spots again are these teams. One and a half punch front layout on that floor routine. Great start for Cal as well. Chase Croft will be the second Tiger to go over on the vault. KJ Johnson in the leadoff spot at 9.825. Adding in another half twist that we just saw KJ. One and a half. I could tell from the table this was going to be a big vault. She kept her elbow so tight on the table, which is what helps her get that height. Big step on that landing though. Really that three foot margin on those steps and hops is supposed to be the margin where you jump to a two tenth deduction alley. And that one certainly pushed that envelope. Yeah, I'm curious what the judges will do. Gymnastics is a subjective sport and we have a different angle than what the judges are seeing. So they could take up to two tenths on that vault. Maddie Jones next to go on the balance beam for the Razorbacks. Ava Sorrento on the uneven bars. They led off with a Gutierrez 9.8875. Oh, that is a very difficult skill. She missed her hand. I think she just did not get the timing on the low bar at the right time. I hope she's okay. Those are sometimes scary falls. Watch this, one of her arms just completely misses the bar. Very savvy cat-like to get to her back though. 
yeah. that landing. Yeah, the thing that's so difficult about competing on podium is the bars can be bouncier that these gymnasts are used to at their home gym or in other competitions. So you have to quickly adjust the timing of your skills, and it's really hard to do that, especially under the lights and the pressure. You can see those leather grips on her hands. There is a, a thing called a dowel, a little round short piece that is in that leather. And if you don't get that over the bar, which has looked like she had trouble there, you are not going to be able to hang on. And that's what looks like what happened to Maddie Young. Oh, oh. I was going to just say she repeated the beginning of the routine, did a good job. I give her credit for going for that pirouette and trying to get that handstand position. Unfortunately, a fall is five tenths, so she's already at a point deduction. So they will want to drop this score. There is so much pressure on these athletes. They not only want to do it for themselves, but also for their teammates. She's got 45 seconds to get back up on the bar. Puts pressure on the rest of her team to be able to hit a routine. Obviously referring to Ava Sorrento when talking about that grip slipping on the bar. That is an unfortunate bar routine. Again, you mentioned it, Allie. Top five scores count. No doubt about it, Stanford's going to want to drop that Ava Sorrento bar score. It is not going to be a good one as Maddie Jones finishes another good beam routine for Arkansas. Yeah, I spoke to Coach Weber about this team starting off on balance beam, and she told this team, we get to start on our best event. The team looked at her kind of confused because they think of floor is their best event, but Coach Weber wants them to believe how good they are on beam. Jordan Kane, the second gymnast on floor for the Bears. They let off with a strong 9-8-6-2-5. Amari Drayton on vault for LSU. Slight under rotation for Amari on vault. That vault is out of a 10.0. Vault is the only event that they can take an under rotation deduction. So they might take a 10th plus that step back. Chase Brock, a 9.825 in the two spot for LSU. So a pair of 9.825s leading to that Amari Drayton ball. Looks like she just really was trying to stick that alley, maybe look for the ground a little early. Yeah, it's difficult in gymnastics. You don't want to go for that stick landing. When the technique is good, the stick will come. The score tower on the right-hand side of your screen. Something new added this season to women's gymnastics, and it has been fantastic. All the scores for these athletes on the right-hand side there. You can follow the team totals at the bottom. Callie Swainy, now the third gymnast to go. So a pair of 9-8 scores for Arkansas. 9-8-5, 9-8, 1-2-5, so a good start for them. This is where you want to see them approach those 9-9s, nine hopefully pass up that 9-9 nine, nine score. That is what the best teams are going to do. If you want to advance to the finals, 9-9s nine, nine are the scores that'll get you there. 9-8s keep you in it, but 9-9s nine, nine help you advance. Jordan finishing off with a beautiful, floaty, effortless layout. Something else that's challenging is during the regular season, these gymnasts compete one at a time. They're not used to hearing floor music and other gymnasts go on other events. So it's really important they stay in their own mental box, especially on beam and bars. Well, Allie, another element of these championships that are different is how far they are from their teammates. Obviously, Ava Sorrento very disappointed in that last bar routine as Brenna Nault is about to go up for Stanford right now. Her teammates down here in the corral were cheering her on, very vocal. She was having a hard time hearing them. So you have to create your own energy. You also have to be your own supporter if things go wrong. Yeah, that's right, Taylor. When I was competing, I would listen for my coaches and my teammates. So it can be really hard if you're used to hearing your teammates in practice and you don't hear them in competition because it's loud, it's really hard. Brenna finishing with a double tuck dismount. Way to come back strong on bars. And they needed that one. So much pressure on the athlete that follows a mistake. You've been there, Allie, and on the biggest stage and your teammate has a mistake, it just, things tighten up a little bit. You get a little more on edge and to go up there and hit clean, that's big for them. Yeah, absolutely. I've also been the one to make a mistake and you love your teammates to become your sisters. So it's hard when you know your teammates are relying on you, but everyone's human. She came back strong. Savannah Shane here, the fourth gymnast to go. Num another 9-8 score, 9 8 one, two, five for great. Down. I like the body position in the air. The judges are looking for hips open, especially towards the end. Very clean vault. LSU needed that one. 
Those nine eights for them on this event, I consider them, well, they're number two in the country on this event. I think they might be the best vault team in the country. They needed this stuck landing. Yeah, keep an eye on her hip position in the air. Judges want to see a straight body. Ella Cesario, now the third gymnast from Cal on floor exercise. 9.825 for Jordan Kane, right before her. I spoke to head coach Crandall Howell about starting off on floor, and she said she was excited about it because she felt like they could get their nervous energy out on floor, felt that they could kind of get almost a warm up in, and they're used to ending on beam at all the away meets this season, so she feels that it's a good advantage for them. Cammie Weaver, the third, fourth gymnast, rather, to go for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coach Ross told me that Cammie begins her routine by taking a moment to herself. She salutes to the judges, lifts her chin, and has daggers in her eyes. She told me she's a fierce beam competitor. Big save on yeah, beam. Yeah, good save on beam. Judges can take up to two tenths for that. She did not put her hands down, which is good, but always hard to have a big wobble like that on your first skill. Ella on floor, good double back, almost looked like she had too much juice, hop back on that. Judges want you to think about, did they have to take a step or did they want to? Again, looking at the score tower on your right, as you see three or more scores get populated, the lighter shaded score, that is currently the low score for that team. You look at Stanford's bars, that 8.6 is their lowest score. That is the score that they will want to drop. Hopefully the rest of the scores will be higher than that one. Ira Alexeva now for Stanford. Every routine critical for them. This is a routine I'm excited about for skills like that, that shoulder flexibility, the height on that Pike Jaeger. Handstand was textbook. Judges allow for a 10 degree window on that handstand. Otherwise, there will be a deduction. This is a great routine. A little short on that handstand. Blindfold connected right into a double back. It's one tenth bonus for that connection at the end of that routine. So two for two hit routines after that Sorrenta 8.6. Now, Kaya Johnson, the most difficult vault being done in women's gymnastics, Alley. Yeah, your Chenko double twist, the type of vault done at the Olympic Games, makes it look too easy. Savannah Shane here right before her. The first 9-9 nine, nine of this first rotation of this competition. Watch how quickly she twists. So difficult. I love how she takes the extra risk. She doesn't have to, but she wants to, and I admire that. Ella Cesario for Cal, 9.825. Diane Mayhew now, freshman. Desert Devils Gymnastics in Arizona. Fourth gymnast to go here again. Nine nines. Keep your eye out for nine nine plus scores. Which team gets the most? Those are probably the teams that will advance. Only two come out of this session. On floor, pay attention to this front pike. I like when the second skill is higher than the first. Haley almost came off of the beam. That's a very difficult connection. Side aerial to lay out, step out. At least two tenths, in my opinion, for that wobble, but didn't look like she touched her hands down on the beam, which will save her some extra tenths. This is freshman Haley Klein, as you mentioned, Allie, on balance beam, and notably, she's following Cami Weaver's 9.6625. Not a score that they can afford to count, and with that Haley Klein wobble on that pass, they are in a tough spot here in the first rotation. Dismount, round off, one and a half. Did a good job coming back from that routine. Absolutely needed that stuck landing there at the end of that beam routine. And then on floor, that punch full was very effortless. Cal looking very ready. Their endurance is paying off. Their hard work is paying off. Kaya Johnson for LSU Vault, the 9.875. Cal just methodically getting through this floor rotation. As we look at vault again, 
and maybe the biggest piece of gymnastics you will see in women's gymnastics is right here with Haley Bryant. The height and the way that she can twist and open up, it is fantastic. Different vault than we've seen from her teammates. This vault is also out of a 10.0 start value. Keep an eye on this height and the way she kicks open to try to spot that landing. That hop though, that is a 10th hop. And keep in mind today, between these two sessions, the high score in each event in the all around, those are your NCAA champions on those respective events. Haley Bryant, best vaulter in the country in my opinion, but that hop might cost you the title there. We shall see. Here's the uneven bars with Anna Roberts. I like that double layout. Her knees and her toes were glued together. Watch her toe point. Such a difficult release move. So hard to keep your legs together when you're twisting in the air like that. And then keep an eye on this double layout. Toes together. This is a different angle than what the judges are seeing. So Haley Klein, a 9-6-3-7-5. That is a new low score now for Arkansas on this event. They are going to have to count Annie Weaver's 9.6625. Serena Linton now, the final gymnast to go for the Razorbacks. Maya Lazan on floor, she size for Cal. She is their fifth athlete to go in that event. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, step out. You can see from that second back handspring, she was a little off, did a great job correcting it. Maya on floor doing a beautiful front double twist. Oh, and a, into a punch front. Then on beam, going to be at least three tenths of a deduction for that slip. Sometimes on podium, the beam is bouncier than the gymnasts are used to. And then you add nerves on top of that. It's really hard to do balance beam when the beam is a little bit shakier. Finishing up with her last tumbling pass. Round up one and a half into punch layout full. That was a really nice controlled landing. We have some individuals competing here today with the teams. They are individual qualifiers to this NCAA championship. Left hand of your screen is Georgia's Lily Smith. She is a freshman. She is the SEC freshman of the year. She is sensational. She is doing the all around today. Here's her first event. Good body position in the air. She actually piked that down at the end. She didn't need to, which is the pike made her over rotate and take a hop and a step back. Lily's ranked top 20 in the country in the all around. Keep in mind again, individual awards today. All-American honors and championship honors as Chloe Widner now, captain of this team, on the bars. And that first release move was so high. I like how dynamic she is on this event. Textbook handstand. Just the dismount, double layout. Oh. oh! You know what judges are looking for as her chest went down, they deduct for that. It's so hard in the moment to think that quickly, but if she kept her chest up, didn't fight for that stick and took a step forward, she might not have gotten as big of a deduction. Yeah, if she can stick that properly at the end there, she's probably looking at a 9.9 plus, probably gonna be about a 9.8 just because of that landing, unfortunately, but great recovery for Stanford on balance, or on uneven bars rather. They will drop that 8.6 from Sorrento. Here is our individual on the balance beam. Amani Herring from Penn State. The individual here, she is a sophomore out of Denville, New Jersey. MJ Frazier is the final gymnast to go for Cal on floor exercise. Yeah, what you'll notice about MJ is the choreography and her attention to detail. Pay attention to her hands, her fingers, everything is so polished.
double layout, so much difficulty in that first tumbling pass. Amana Herring finishing up balance beam. Penn State had a good season. You can see head coach Sarah Brown there. She's in her seventh season. They upset the Michigan Wolverines to get to the regional final. Great season for them. Of flexibility judges are looking for over 180 degree split no issues for MJ there run through into a double tuck great rotation for the Bears just one score in the 9-9 so far, pending that Frazier score, but just solid and methodical and probably exactly what they need to do to get through this session into the finals. LSU Tigers 9.9 .9 for Haley Bryant, a pair of 9-9, solid rotation for them as well. Stanford Cardinal finished strong on the uneven bars as a team dropped that 8-6. The story though of the first rotation is Arkansas's balance beam. Unfortunately, they're gonna have to count two scores in the 9-6s. Not a good start for the Razorbacks. Here we go with another individual, Courtney Blackson. She is a senior from Boise State. And this is a routine I'm excited about. That was one of the most impressive shootovers I have seen. She held that on top of the bar. Watch this skill right here. Very unique, huge release move. Don't see that release move often anymore. The toe point is fantastic. I think she's gonna be happy with that. And here's the thing, give yourself a shot at the title. She went up there and she absolutely crushed her routine, probably as good as she can do, perfect landing at the end, and you just never know, Courtney, you could be a national champion on this event. Yeah, it is so much easier said than done. As a gymnast, you want to go big on everything, you want to attack the event, but when you're nervous, doing your normal is so much easier said than done. They get the stick stick if you're a Stanford Cardinal. It seems appropriate. Another all-arounder competing here as an individual. Skylar Kilo Gold from Washington. She's a senior out of West Des Moines, Iowa. Front handspring, front double twist. Judges want to see control out of every landing. This is the only event that you don't have to stick. You can step out of it and ludge, but the judges need to see control, otherwise they will take deductions. done from Kilo Wilhelm. Pay attention to her body position in the air. Judges are looking for complete extension. And then watch this layout at the end. She opens her arms, helps her have more control on that last tumbling pass. First rotation is in the books. It was an exciting one. The LSU Tigers though, the favorite from this session there behind the Cal Bears. We're gonna learn more about the LSU Tigers when we come back and the journey they've had over the last year and a half.
Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas. After one rotation, the Cal Bears hold a slight lead over the LSU Tigers, Stanford in third. Arkansas dug themselves a little bit of a hole after one rotation, but the story is those top three teams all within a couple of tenths of a point. It is exciting so far here in this semifinal. LSU Tigers Alley, last year it was an unbelievable challenge for them. They had so many injuries. You can see them listed in this graphic on the screen. So many challenge, but it really did a lot for the growth of this team, really. Yeah, head coach Jay Clark called it the year of Cinderella on crutches, but it really allowed so many leaders to step up, and they have come back stronger than ever. I think this is the best they've ever looked. And despite all those injuries, they made it to the national championships and finished fourth. Certainly a year of character building for the Tigers. This team does it for each other, and they're very connected. They pour into each other. I love each and every one of those girls. Everybody brings something different to the team. Being able to bring the joy and intensity to every single competition is something that this team has latched onto, and I think it's really, really worked for us. Wow. This LSU team is unstoppable tonight. Our consistency, our confidence has grown tremendously, and I'm just so proud. And I feel like the sky's the limit for this team. One thing at a time. Start fast, finish strong. We have the goal in mind of what we want to do. We obviously came here to win a national championship, but if we do our normal gymnastics, support each other, encourage each other, then the results are going to play out just as they should. Jake Clark told us this team was completely unselfish last season because they had to be. But the question was, would that characteristic carry over when they had the depth and consistency at their disposal? And the proof has been in the pudding so far this season for the LSU Tigers. Like they said, the goal of a national championship has been at the forefront. And the same connectivity and emotion that led the charge last season is still present for this team here today. We've got plenty more action still to come. The Tigers will head to the bars where they are ranked third in the nation. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship continues. And Skylar Killo Wilhelm are all arounders. Courtney Black's in the highest score on the uneven bars, an individual trying to win a national title. Of course, we've got the stream team. If you want to hear commentary on every individual event, there they are. We put them up there. It's like gymnastic star detention, but they're awesome at their job. Go to ESPN Plus, and you can hear them talk about all the events. They are having a good time up there. Sam Patrick, Bridget Sloan, Anastasia Webb, and Kennedy Baker on the call on the stream team. Here we go with our second rotation. LSU will be on the uneven bar. Stanford, they move to balance beam. Arkansas on floor exercise. An outstanding event for them, Allie. They're going to have to be great to get back in this. And meanwhile, the Cal Bears, the top team after one rotation, they go to the vault. Maddie Williams, left hand of your screen, getting things started there for the Bears. And Alexis Jeffrey for LSU on the uneven bar. Yeah, on vault, I noticed Maddie runs almost on releve. Beautiful vault. She does that to control the timing into the round off. And on bars, Alexis fell on her dismount at the regional final. She's got to be patient with the dismount, but also quick to finish the rotation. Right here, very high. It'll be interesting, Allie, to watch LSU. They had trouble with landings on vault, and I don't mean falling, but hopping around. First bar routine, another hop. They need to settle into those landings, a huge part of scoring big in women's gymnastics. Claire Dean on balance beam for Stanford, coming off a great first rotation on the uneven bars, and Calista Gamio, the great starting athlete for the Razorbacks, get things going here as well on floor exercise. And Claire on beam, that was a difficult connection. Side aerial into a layout step out. She actually switches her legs in the air, which is very unique. But I think the judges will take at least two tenths of a deduction on that. Didn't seem like she put her hands down, but starting off on beam is a very important role. Very nerve wracking. Dismount round off one and a half. So we saw Stanford on bars with a mistake. They recovered, got to drop that score. Little error there from Claire Dean, a wobble in that step. 
Not going to be a huge start score from them. They'll want to build to keep themselves in this. Ty and Mayhew will be the second ball to go for the Cal Bears. Maddie Williams led off with a 9.8875. As far as first scores in rotations, that is fantastic. Here, Chaco, one and a half. What I like about that back handspring onto the table was it was on her fingertips. She got, that allowed her to get so much height in a good block off the table and on floor, finishing with a effortless double tuck. I don't think the judges will take off anything for that lunge. It was so controlled. Great start for Arkansas on floor. Arkansas number nine in the nation on floor exercise. They, again, are going to have to put up big numbers, about a half a point outside of second. Again, top two are the places you want to keep an eye on. Winning is nice, but it's not the most important thing today here in the semifinals. It's being in the top two and advancing. Here on balance beam, Sienna Robinson will be the second gymnast for Stanford. Ashley Cowan for LSU in the two spot. Alexis Jeffrey, a 9.8125. And on bars, watch Ashley, watch the height on this release move going to connect immediately into an overshoot. We talked so much about handstands. She doesn't have to hit that handstand because she connected immediately from that release move. Has to be above horizontal though for the judges not to take off. Double layout dismount. Sienna on beam, layout step out, nice and controlled. Keep in mind, Stanford just 0 .075, less than a tenth of a point behind the LSU Tigers for that second spot. I know it's one rotation, but you hang around long enough and you give yourself a chance to do the Stanford Cardinal. I like the rhythm of that. That was a nice connection. Judges are looking for a fluid movement on beam. Anytime there's too much of a break and a stop, they will take off. There should be no deduction for that. Freshman Haley Klein now on floor exercise. Had some trouble on balance beam. Got to put that behind you now. Focus on the floor exercise. They need big, big scores here. Nine nines. Yeah, whenever I struggled on an event, my coaches would always tell me, turn the page, move on to the next chapter. That's exactly what Haley has to do. Front layout, step out. We don't often see that into a double tuck. I don't think she went out. Almost looked like she was going to step out of bounds. Impressive she stayed in. We'll get a deduction for that slide backwards, but you said it, Allie. Saved a tenth by staying in bounds, which it looked like she did. MJ Frazier will be the third gymnast for the Bears on ball. Kyan Mayhew, 9.875. MJ's going to do the same vault we saw from Kaya Johnson. Uh, Yurchenko double twist. Very nice, impressive, over-rotated it. Judges will take off a couple of tenths for that landing, but the air was beautiful. Very difficult vault. Give her a lot of credit for going for that in this competition. Well done from Haley Klein. We are told that they did not raise a flag on that floor team, which would have indicated she stepped out of bounds. Here we are with Brennan Nolt. Follows the 98375. You see that 96875 for Stanford, right hand to your screen. Gotta drop that score. <laughs> Beautiful three skills connected in a row. Ty Johnson for LSU follows Ashley Collins, 9875 on bars. What you'll notice about this bar routine right here from Kaya is she is so dynamic and intentional with every handstand like that. Has one of the best dismounts in the country. We see this often, but not many like that. There you go. They needed that routine. That was fantastic. Coach Jay Clark right there ringside. He loves it. You get the sticks going and they can be contagious. They've eluded LSU 
quite a bit so far through a rotation in the half, but Kaya Johnson, like a dart, gets it done for the Tigers. Yeah, Coach Yim says that Brenna loves gymnastics. It's hard to get her out of the gym. Makes me happy to hear that. Maddie Jones, the third razor back here on floor exercise. Well, Maddie Jones is living out a goal that actually played a part in her collegiate decision. She actually turned down a full ride to another program to be a walk-on at Arkansas. I asked her what led to that decision and sacrifice, and she said this coaching staff and the belief that they would take us to the national championship. And they are here at the national championship. Got some work to do. Maya Lazan on ball. Got a 10 at regionals. Not today, but pretty good. I love the height and the amplitude off the table. Maya was so clean in the air, legs were straight. MJ Frazier, a 9.85 for that Yurchenko double full. Two yet to go for the Cal Bears on vault. Maddie, one and a half to punch front layout. Very clean gymnastics from Maddie. I think the best choreographers will choreograph dance into the routine to allow them to catch their breath in between their tumbling and their jumps. Kira Alexeva on the balance beam for Stanford. Senior out of Plano, Texas. Competed for the Russian national team at the world championship level. Arkansas coming back strong on floor. On beam back handspring layout. Solid. One of my favorite quotes for beam is whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. You have to be so decisive with every skill. Connor McLean now one of the outstanding freshmen this season in collegiate gymnastics and man can she put on a clinic on the uneven bars yeah this is a highlight for me pay attention to her toe point coach Clark says he trusts Connor more than he's ever trusted another freshman and you are going to see why pay attention to this dismount wow that handstand was textbook watch her knees and her toes glue together the entire time just that little slide back, probably a half attempt slide. I gotta think we're looking at about a 995 for Connor McLean. She follows Kaya Johnson's 9.9. .9. Watch her toe point connected right into a pack salto. And then pay attention to this from this angle. Her legs are together the entire time. One of the best in the country, in my opinion, on that event. Jaden Silver's now on ball, follows Lazan's 9.9. .9. Oh! Chenko, one and a half, under-rotated that. In gymnastics, you can't go for the stick because if you think about the stick, sometimes you forget to think about what you have to do in your roundup back handspring to get the right height. First big break for the Cal Bears, but keep in mind they've got four good scores already. And I'll tell you what the coaches are telling Ella Cesario. She's the last gymnast on vault. Don't try to stick, just land on your feet and they will be just fine in this rotation. Leah, William, Leah Smith rather on floor exercise for Arkansas. Stepped out of bounds on that first tumbling pass. Not uncommon to see a lot of out of bounds in a big competition like this. Hard to control your excitement and the adrenaline. Chloe Widner now on balance being for Stanford. She's gone 10.0 on this event this season. She's number eight in the country on this event. Follows Alex Zavis, 9.8875. For Chloe, I think it's the flexibility that stands out to me. In those leaps, she keeps her hips open to get over 180 degrees. Leah finishing up with a great double pike Opened up just a little bit too early. Oh. 
Chloe was very off on that, but did a good job continuing to move her arms. Judges should still give her that connection. Impressive she was able to correct herself that quickly. Beam is only four inches wide, so if you're a little bit off, it's very hard to correct yourself. Savannah Chain here going for LSU on bars right now. The transfer from Florida, who has acclimated so well to this LSU team, not just a consistent contributor, a vocal leader. I've been down here by the team. She's the first one to speak to someone after an event, a key piece for Jay Clark this season. The height on that Jaeger was fantastic, able to completely finish the rotation before catching the bar. Jaden Silver's 9.275 for the Bears on vault. Cesario, the last gymnast to go. She lands this ball. They can wipe away that 9.275. Justin Howell, co-head coach in the background there for the Bears, telling her, just land on your feet. Chanko full. They needed that. Always added pressure when you go after a teammate who makes a mistake. An easier vault, just a 995 start value, but playing it safe at a moment they needed to. Yeah, her form in the air is really nice. I like how her toes are together. So they will definitely drop that 9275. We'll see what that Cesario score ends up being. LSU on bars, they are rocking 99125 for Connor McLean. Lauren Williams will be the next razor back on floor exercise. Meanwhile, Anna Roberts and the Stanford Cardinal. They started slow with that Claire Dean 96875 alley, but Chloe Widner 98375 and trying to get a big one here, and they will absolutely keep themselves in the mix halfway through. Broke that connection on beam. Anna wobbled in between that. Judges can't see a wobble in between that connection. On floor, Lauren Williams doing a huge tuck full in on that first pass. That mat, that mat right there is not a deduction. It's just to help protect the athlete's bodies. A little bit of a softer landing. Anna on floor. Beam doing a good job, remaining calm, taking it one skill at a time. Clean landings from Lauren on floor. Great finish from Roberts and Stanford on balance. Beam, we'll see what that number is. Trying to chase down that two spot. Skylar Killo Wilhelm, the next vulture to go. The individual meeting here all around. I like the control from Lauren on that double tuck dismount. The Skylar did a very clean Yurchenko full out of a 995, just a small, I think half a tenth deduction on that landing. Skylar a 98875 for her floor team in the first rotation. Nice vault there. Haley Bryant now, the next gymnast for LSU. It's been a very good bar rotation. Just the low score of a 9.8125 from Jeffrey in the leadoff spot. Haley Bryant, perfection should be her middle name because she is the 10-0 queen currently in collegiate gymnastics. Here she is, last gymnast for the Tigers. Yeah, and it's because of handstand positions like that. Haley doing a good job taking her time in between each skill. Sometimes when you're nervous, you tend to rush. No issues here. Watch this dismount. Double front with a half twist. Little foot shuffle back, but I tell you what, 9.9125 for Haley Bryant will put LSU in the lead. And I think it's harder for her to make toast in the morning than it is to get a 995 on bars. Watch this handstand position. Judges allow for a 10 degree window. Shouldn't receive a deduction. Double front half twist, so difficult. Especially doing that at the end of the routine when you're tired. 
We will see if that is enough to move LSU into the top spot. Now, Nikki Smith, Michigan State gymnast, sophomore, out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. Individual competing on balance beam. Michigan State, an outstanding season, won their first ever Big Ten team championship. Unfortunately, had a disappointing regional and did not advance here as a team. A lot of people thought they would make it this year. They're an up-and-coming squad. Wow, Frankie Price on floor. Stunning double layout. And on balance beam, Nikki's gonna do one of the more difficult dismounts that we see in the competition. It's a round off double tuck dismount. Stuck this in warm up. Did two in a row, stuck it. Amazing. Goes for the big difficulty and it pays off. Frankie showing off her endurance. The height that she gets on her tumbling and the jumps is what sets her apart. The Frankie Price finishing off a good floor rotation. They will drop that 9625. Will the Razorbacks? This double layout is so difficult. She didn't even have to pike that down. She kept her hips open in that layout position the entire time. So few gymnasts in the world can do that. Lily Smith now from Georgia on the uneven bar. She is absolutely special on this event. Has gone 10-0 this season in just her freshman year. Yeah, you'll see why for skills like that. Watch the extension of her knees all the way to her toes. Wow. Beautiful routine. Just a small little shuffle of her foot on that dismount. I think she could go 995 on that. Haley Bryant 9.925, currently the high score on this event. Lily Smith competing in the all-around but also can win individual event titles depending on how she scores and all American honors are at stake today as well. Now over to floor exercise, Shea Campbell from UCLA, such a fun gymnast to watch. She is a senior out of Carrollton, Texas. A disappointing finish to the year for the Bruins. They got upset in the regionals by Arizona State, so could not continue on their journey, hoping to be here at the national championships this year. But Janelle McDonald in her second season leading the Bruins certainly has a bright future there. Full in, this routine is a highlight for me. She puts on a show. Fantastic routine. Not many can perform like that. I love the Razorback supporting her, putting up the 10 sign for Shea Campbell. Really the camaraderie between the individuals and the teams is something special. Yeah, it's it's pretty special. They're used to the individuals are used to coming with their teammates. 
So it's kind of like the teams adopt the individuals. It's really nice to see them cheering as if they're on the same team. And there, this is her teammates cheering for her and screaming for her. I love to see the support. I believe that was actually Marzetta Fraser, MJ Fraser's sister, wearing a Cal t-shirt, but she's a Bruin. <laughs> so there you go. It's been a good rotation for the LSU Tigers, and Taylor's got the head coach of LSU, Jay Clark. Thank you, John. Coach, not the typical vault rotation for your team, but three routines, 9-9 nine, nine or better on bars. How'd they respond? Good. I thought we were a little flat when we came down. We were hopping around all over the place, and then and then uh, kind of told him we need to pick it up a little bit. We can't sleepwalk through this thing. This thing is, is you know, anybody's game, as you okay. know. And so did a little better on bars. We just got to keep that momentum going. We're, we're kind of that team. Once we get the fire lit, we usually try to keep that, that momentum going. It's a got an old saying around here that momentum's a dangerous drug. So let's hope <laughs> we got a bunch of it. We're used to seeing that from you guys. Best of luck. Thanks a lot. Allie, we talked about those landings. They seem to finally come through a little bit on bars, but other than that, great rotation for the Tigers. Great rotation. Kaya Johnson, double layout dismount off bars, one of the best in the country. Connor, this toe point is fantastic. Dismount from Haley Bryant, double front half twist. I think this is going to be great momentum heading into beam. So halfway through the LSU Tigers, they have a slight lead over the Cal Bears and just a couple of tenths ahead. It's the team that did it, and they want to show everybody why they deserve to be here. They got a little work to do. They are over eight tenths behind that coveted second spot in the top two, Cal LSU. LSU now moves past the Cal Bears, but right behind them, just a little over two tenths, are the Stanford Cardinal for that second spot. Your individual scores in that last rotation. Lily Smith, a 9.925. She ties Haley Bryant for that event high score. And she also chases some all around honors as well. In this rotation, LSU goes to beam. Stanford of Florida size, Arkansas to vault. Cal Bears are on the uneven bars. And here's the thing, Allie, both LSU and Cal, they still gotta go to beam. And I love to say the meet doesn't start. So you go to beam, it's only four inches wide and it's not bigger in Texas actually, it's still four inches wide in Texas, but you gotta go there and it's a tough place to be as Cammy Weaver vaults for Arkansas. Wow, uh, that was fantastic. That ball is out of a 9.95. That score is going to be very close to that. And on bars, Maya Lazan. She is in this leadoff role because the team and coaches feel that her energy sets a good tone for everybody else. Stuck dismount. Good start for Cal. Sierra Ballard starting off on balance beam. I know you love her in this leadoff spot, Allie. I do. Sierra's confidence on this event. She takes a lot of pride in going first. I like how she attacks the beam. First skill, back handspring layout, big test for her. Claire Dean will lead off for Stanford here on floor exercise. She also led off on balance beam. Had a little bit of trouble there, just a 9-6-8-7-5. They really need to continue to be lights out. Maybe even better than they've been through the first half if they want to keep in the hunt for that two spot. Cal is gonna put it together. The Cardinal need to do the same. Sierra on beam imagines she is between two brick walls. It reminds her to stay tight. Claire starting off with a front handspring, front one and a half twist. And on beam, round up, one and a half dismount. Good start for LSU to get this team's confidence going. Ashley Nat, the main beam coach for LSU ringside, right in front of us actually, thrilled with that leadoff. Again, such an important lineup position. And Sierra, again, just does what she's done all season, just delivers. Cammy Weaver led off with a 9, 8, 8, 2, and 7, 5 rather, for Arkansas on ball. Leah Smith here in the two spot. Arkansas, nothing to lose at this point. They've got to go for perfection every time. Wow, two excellent vaults. 
Wow, that is going to give the rest of the team so much confidence going into this event. They got the memo. Go for perfect. And that's how you're supposed to do it. Watch her elbows position on the table, her body position, the quickness, it's dynamic. Exactly what the judges are looking for. 995 start value, so that would be essentially a 10 if she gets a 995. Can't go higher than that. Certainly look like at least a 99 to me. Cal Bears led off with Maya Lazan on bars and a 9.9 as your leadoff score. If you're the Stanford Cardinal in third place, trying to catch the Bears, you don't like to see that. But this is an event, though, that the Bears are outstanding. Ella Cesario, the next to go. Savannah Shane here for LSU, follows Ballard's 9.9. .9. Yeah, and on bars, Ella, this is one of the best Jaeger connections into shoot over. I watched Cal in practice on this event yesterday, and they just hit routine after routine. Double layout, dismount. Where some of those stuck landings may have eluded the LSU Tigers, not so much for Cal in this rotation on bars. That full turn is a requirement on beam. All these requirements and bonus points add up to a 10-0 start value. Amanda Zhang for Stanford, the next one is on floor. 9.8375 for Dean. A good start score, but man, it's hard to get excited about it when Cal and LSU putting up nine nines in the leadoff spot. Excellent stuck dismount on beam. Amanda on floor, first tumbling pass. I like the height of that first tumbling pass there. Looks like LSU is kind of finding their mojo, and that is a dangerous thing if you're the rest of the country because LSU can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody if they are on their game. Dee Dee Bro, the longtime head coach at LSU, you can see her in the stands as well, loving it. Frankie Price, the next gymnast on vault, follows a 98875 from Leah Smith. Tell they have been working really hard on those landings. That hard work is paying off. Jordan Weaver, head coach of the Razorbacks, did tell us earlier this season they like to do vaults onto a raised surface. They stack mats, make the vaults harder. Not a fun thing to do as a gymnast, but certainly looks like today at the most important part of the season is paying off. I don't know if Arkansas could have asked for a better vault rotation so far. Savannah Shane here puts up a 9.925, and currently that's the high score on balance beam. And that is only the second gymnast to go for LSU, Connor McLean. We talked about how unbelievable her bar routine is, Allie, here as well. She shows off that artistry. She's been perfect on this event as well. Andy Lee on the uneven bars for Cal on bars watch this jaeger i think that's the best jaeger i've ever seen in my life dynamic and high on balance beam connor mclean does switch leap switch leap pass four tenths bonus for that connection right there what sets connor apart on this event is she is on releve on a lot of her skills doesn't give her any extra bonus points, but just looks more beautiful, leaves the judges with a better overall impression. Even that wolf jump, that's a skill that so many of us learn at a young age, but she does it better than most, showing off her flexibility. What a routine from Lee on the bars for Cal. Three routines. Almost perfect with stuck landings. They already have a pair of nine nines. Where are the judges going to go if they keep hitting like this? Gainer full dismount. So much fun to watch. 
Connor McLean on the bars and the balance beam especially. She's great everywhere, but those two events, wow. Victoria Cluck on floor exercise for Stanford. 9 8 one, two, five for Zhang. Again, I, I hate, hate to keep going back to it, but those are good scores, but doesn't look like good enough with Cal and LSU doing what they're doing. Dakota Essen Price on vault for the Razorbacks. Victoria doing an impressive double layout. Dakota on vault. Yurchenko one and a half more difficult than we've seen from her teammates. Those lines on the vault the judges use as a guideline. So the judges could take up to two tenths because she went over that line. It's one of those things I, I find it funny. They got the lines, but it's kind of also a guide. You know, how far out did they go? And it leaves it up to the judges to kind of decide what they want to take. Yeah, it's interesting. In the elite world, the judges use that to take off a deduction. But in college, they use it as a guide. So it depends on what the judges decide to do. It'll be interesting to see what score she gets and how much they take off for that landing. It's been all nine nines for the Tigers on beam. They've got three all-stars yet to go. The first of those three is Kaya Johnson. Stuck landing for Victoria on that double tuck. Now Kaya Johnson's gonna do a skill back handspring layout. We see this a lot in college, but not many do it dynamic like that. Kaya is a very consistent competitor but she has struggled on this skill right here. Switch leap, switch leap, no issues today. Told me she has to remember to keep her arms tight because when she doesn't remember, that's when she runs into trouble. Front toss right here. MJ Frazier now on. And even bars for Cal, 9.9125 for Andy Lee. LSU and Cal, all 9-9 nine nine so far here in this rotation. Yeah, Cal and LSU are so good on bars and beam. MJ is so fluid on this event, effortlessly floats from one bar to the next. Double layout, dismount. <laughs> Kaya, round off, double twist, dismount. Both of them just pushing each other to the next level. Two heavyweight fighters just back and forth, left and right of your screen. It's like a cat playing with a ball of yarn. I don't mean to... to make the other team sound like they're not outstanding, but when you see greatnesses like this, it's finally like they said, enough is enough. We're knocking that ball, ball of yarn off the table and we are gonna take control of the meat. And that is exactly what Cal and LSU are doing right now. They are pulling away. Freshman Haley Klein follows Dakota Essen Price's 9.7625. Little disappointing, especially because that's their first 10-0 vault. Double on that landing. Haley gets a lot of distance on that vault. Brennan Nolt on floor exercise. Victoria Cluck a 9.7375. Can't count that if you're Stanford. In fact, can't only not count that. You gotta go nine nines the rest of the way. LSU, Haley Bryant mounting the beam, getting them going. When we talk about Haley Bryant, who is this year's AAI award winner, we always talk about consistency. I asked her how she's managed that. She said, I live a very consistent life and I train very consistently. But she said a key for her is never trying to replicate her own success, creating new success. And I love that take because it is easy, I think, Allie, for gymnasts who who've reached the pinnacle the way she has and done so well, you feel like there's this pressure to do it again. You've been there too, two Olympics, two gold medals, you know, those gold medals. How hard is that though? How hard is that focus? It is so hard and I think that that's what makes her such a good athlete. For example, that skill right there, standing punch card, most gymnasts can't even do that on the floor, it requires so much strength. Haley also told me that Coach Clark tells her, your normal is enough that helps relax her in pressure situations like this. Her normal absolutely is enough. I've said Haley Bryant makes greatness look boring because she does it so easy and she does it again right there. Keep in mind, Haley Bryant, not just trying to help her team advance, 
to the next round of this championship. She's the number one ranked all-arounder in the country. She's trying to win that all-around title. MJ Frazier puts up the fourth score of 9-9 or better for the Bears. Gabby Perea now here in the fifth spot. Lauren Williams finishes things off for the Razorbacks. On vault. Wow. Almost oh. a suck landing on vault for Lauren Williams and Gabby keeping up the momentum that her teammates have started with. What a great rotation for Cal on bars. It's hard to find a deduction when you watch them. And watch her body position in the air. It is hard to see where you're going. Does a good job bending her legs to anticipate that landing. Aliyah Finnegan will finish things off on the balance beam for the Tigers. 995 for Haley Bryant. So she either has a loan or a share of the number one score on bars, beam, and in the all around. It's tough to go in that early session today and have those individual scores hold up, but if anybody can do it, it's Haley Bryant. Anna Roberts for Stanford, fifth gymnast to go on floor exercises. Aaliyah Finnegan, as I mentioned, finishes things off here on the Big test for Aaliyah right here, backhand spring, layout, layout. Very difficult to connect those three skills in a row. Aaliyah told me that she thinks about anything except for gymnastics when she's on this event. She completely relies on muscle memory. I can see Aaliyah taking deep breaths in between her skills. Her aerial slight waver right there. Fantastic beam rotation from LSU. I think they're going to be really happy with that. That's going to give them a lot of confidence going into their last rotation where they're ranked number one. Not a bad feeling. It's funny, that beam rotation was so good. You see that little tiny balance check from Ali, and you're like, oh, like it's bad, right? I mean, but it, that's just a testament to how good the rest of that rotation was. Over to Vault our individual, Anaya Smith from Arizona State. Wow, that was fantastic. That landing position landed completely upright with her chest up. You can see how excited she is for good reason. That was probably as good as she could have done it. Yeah, she qualified in from the regions with a 9-9, so Probably going to pass that up. Jay Santos, the head coach of Arizona State right there. He loves it. As Maddie Williams for Cal finishes their bar rotation. Gabby Perea, 9.9125. Holy cow, these two. You can see their, their event totals for LSU and Cal right next to each other, both over a 49.5. Lily Smith now on balance beam for third event of the day. Started a little bit slow on vault but picked it up certainly on arguably her best event, the even bars, but equally great here on balance beam. Chloe Widner on floor for Stanford, fresh off her first career 10 on floor during regionals as the team clinched their trip to the national championship. But she told me she actually had no idea she scored a perfect 10 until way after the meet. She said she had calculated the score, realized she had gotten enough for her team to advance and began celebrating the team goal that had been achieved. The personal accolade was just a cherry on top. Yeah, she got enough, it was a 10. It was perfection, and what a leader she has been for Stanford this season. This routine for Lily is impressive. That front toss with straight legs. Been so solid and confident on this routine so far. Wow. Oh, oh. didn't hold that stick. Judges are looking for you to hold that stick for one second. Otherwise, the stick doesn't count. 
She's going to be so happy with that. And last year they would have done the quick turn, the college stick, right? And maybe got away with it, but not this year. That is probably going to be a total of a tenth off for that landing, but beautiful on the apparatus. What stands out to me in this routine is the choreography and the way that she performs it. Chloe showing off why she is the anchor spot on this team. So they do finish strong. Does Stanford it. They are going to fall back a little further out of that second spot in this rotation. We'll find out how much exactly when we get that winner score in. But I love the fight from this Cinderella team. Ranked 19th in the country out of the regular season. And they made it here to the championships. Skylar Killo Wilhelm now on the even bars. Last rotation, 985 on vault. Having a good day. Keep in mind, Skylar's had to wait the entire Cal team to go, so she's not that warmed up. This is impressive, takes a lot of mental toughness. Double tuck dismount. Good day for her so far. Fantastic job there. One of our other individuals, Anaya Smith, a 99375, puts her in the top spot on vault. Good. Pike Jaeger connected immediately into that overshoot in this dismount is a double tuck dismount. Opens up, spots that landing. Three great events for Kilo Wilhelm from Washington. Now our individual here on floor exercise, Skyla Schulte from Michigan State. Junior out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. The 2022 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Back-to-back -back Freshmen of the Year in 22 and 23 for Michigan State. Nikki Smith, who's also here, was the other Freshman of the Year in 23. 9.975. The high score for Kyla Schulte on this event. Capable of winning it, certainly. At the regional final, she stuck both tumbling passes. Hopefully she'll do the same today. Tuck full in. Great control on that step back. There's a stick that you wanted, Allie. The high score on floor right now is MJ Frazier. And it's a 9.9375. Let's see if Schulte did enough to give her a shot at a national title here. This is exciting. Watch this tumbling pass. Difficult, full in. Controls that landing, and then this last pass, front through to double tuck. Pay attention to her feet, they don't move. The end of the routine when you're out of breath, the amount of endurance and hard work that that took to be able to do that. I mean, she, Stanford even gave her a tree branch. I mean, I'm assuming that's a compliment if, if somebody from Stanford gives you part of a tree, right? I would guess so too. I love the support that the teammates have for the individual athletes. I was getting emotional watching it in practice yesterday. It's really nice. The high score on vault so far was Anaya Smith from Arizona State. Here's another look. Watch her body position when she sticks this. 
Wow. Just perfectly in the right spot. The highest score on beam so far, Haley Bryant. Front aerial connected into back handspring. Dismount front one and a half. Haley showing why she's Haley. 9.95 for that routine. They have taken control of this meet. LSU just ahead of the Bears. Stanford currently in that no-go spot in the third position. We'll see if they can pull a miracle off here as we look at the individual scores from those la that last rotation highlighted by that Anaya Smith vault. So Stanford trying to keep that Cinderella story going, Allie. They are just under a half a point behind that second spot. They've got to really be perfect here. Maybe get some help from the Cal Bears if they want to advance. And here's Amanda Zhang for the Cardinal ball. Amanda's going to do your Chango full. Good clean landing. A little bit of bent legs in the beginning of that vault. A good start for Stanford. Callie Swaney for Arkansas. On the uneven bars, leading things off there. So now it's Cal's turn to go to the balance beam. And Swaney finishes up that bar routine. Andy Lee will lead things off. She finally came down from the sky on that Jaeger alley. That was a mile in the air on the uneven bars. But again, they are great on this event. You love talking about the Cal Bear beam rotation, but you got to stay on. Easier said than done. Head coach, head coach Liz Crandall Howell is actually a judge. She's been judging for over 20 years. I think this gives this team an edge. She focuses on routine construction, finding elements that are most suitable and least deductible for each gymnast. Connor McLean will lead things off on floor for LSU. And I talk about an embarrassment of riches. They are outstanding on this event. And dare I say, McLean, maybe the greatest leadoff floor routine in the entire country. Watch this. Connor opens up with a massive double layout. Andy handling the test of that critical leadoff spot so well. So much pressure going up first on balance beam. The team, the coaches have to have so much trust in you to go up first. Cal just needs five hits to get through this session into the finals. Now they just need four. Claire Dean over on ball follows Zhang's 9.7875. Chanko full, same ball we just saw. Connor ending on floor. Controlled that landing. Toe pointed even in her tumbling passes. A lot of talk about collegiate gymnasts continuing their elite careers and trying to make that Olympic team later this summer. Well, it's not ruled out. Connor McLean might be one of those that wants to take a chance and take a shot, rather. On that journey to Paris, there is talk that she may try to compete at the U.S. Classic here in about a month. We shall see. I know a lot of us would love to see her out on that floor on the elite level. I hope she well. does. Maddie Williams following Lee's 9875. Again, Cal does not have to be lights out here. They just need to be good. Jamie Pratt for Arkansas follows Swaney's 98125. Arkansas trying to finish on a positive note over a point back of that second spot. Really, for all intents and purposes, insurmountable unless they get a lot of help from the teams in front of them in the form of mistakes, but still want to finish strong here. This is a good routine for Jamie. She's dynamic and aggressive. I can see the confidence in this routine. Maddie fell on this skill in the regional final. Big test for her. Back handspring layout, step out. No issues today. Easy. Switch leap, split jump. Coach Howell from Cal told me they, they do a lot of things to distract the athletes in practice. Air horns and cold routines and a lot of distractions on beam in particular to try to get them to focus. And man, they have been really something special. Number two in the country on this event this season and they do it as well as anyone. Amari Drayton, sensational freshman for LSU, follows 
Connor McLean's 99375. I mean, that's just not fair. <laughs> Amari just opened up with a double layout. Practically stuck that. No big deal. Brennan Alt on vault. Follows Dean's 9725. Those scores not going to help Stanford move into that second spot. Unique ball. Haven't seen that today. Impressive distance. The distance off the table is something the judges are looking for. They're going to be happy with that. Ella Cesario on beam for Cal, getting ready to go. One thing I've noticed down here on the floor, John, is just how composed this Cal team has been from start to finish. Keep in mind, they had two uncharacteristic falls on bars in last year's semifinals that ended their championship run, and the athletes told me it brought them all back with a hunger, not just to make it to today, but to make it to Saturday. You know, that's one thing, talking to the coaching staff from Cal, and I noticed this last year. They remind me of Oklahoma, and not that you want to be compared to other people, but if you're going to be compared to anybody, you want to be compared to Oklahoma. They have a toughness about them, and nothing has come easy for them. They don't have a fancy training facility. They work out at 8 a.m. every day. And I said, you know, Coach Howell, does that, you think that creates toughness? He said, absolutely. And it's in Liz and Justin's DNA to be tough, and I think it makes a huge difference in settings like this. Oh. Oh. And just on cue, right when I'm just telling all the great things, they have a mistake, but not going to hurt them too badly if they can finish strong the rest of the way. Reese Strotar finishing up for Arkansas on the uneven bars. Nice routine. Yeah, Reese on bars, that's a highlight for me. Her execution is fantastic. And Ella on beam, it's always stressful to fall at a competition like this, but they can drop the score. Amari Drayton put up a 98875. KJ Johnson now takes to the floor. Cesario finishing up being KJ Johnson, such a fun athlete to watch. One of one of the most fun in my opinion. She's got so much personality and big gymnastics. Last year at these NCAA championships in the semifinals, she went on floor after recovering from a foot injury, a broken foot, and she knew that she could re-break that foot. And I asked her about it before the competition here today, and she said, my, there are so many injuries from my teammates. I knew if I could get out there, I had to. Re-injured that foot during the routine, but that helped LSU get to the NCAA final. Floyd Widner on vault for Stanford. Best vault we've seen from Stanford so far. The height on that vault stood out to me. The amplitude off the table. KJ Johnson on floor opens up with a full in. What's impressive about that is most gymnasts need to grab their legs to help with the rotation. KJ's got so much power, she doesn't even need to. What's impressive is I could stand there and she could do it over my head. It was unbelievably high. <laughs> Reese Drotar, big 9.925 for Arkansas. That Drotar score gives her a share of the lead currently on that event. It's a crowded leaderboard, but she's got a piece of that number one spot currently. Wow. Finishes up with a double tuck. The type of control that is exactly what the judges are looking for. Be interested to see what the judges do with that. They've put up six athletes, and if any one of them won the NCAA title in that event, it wouldn't surprise me. And KJ won them. I think she gets a little overshadowed because of the, the Haley Bryants and the Kaya Johnsons, but her routine, every bit as good, in my opinion, as anyone else in this lineup. 
I agree. What stands out to me is the endurance and the strength that she has. Can tell she does a lot of conditioning to be able to do that routine. MJ Frazier now on balance being follows a 9-2-8-7-5 from Cesario. That is not a score they want to count, but Stanford not putting up huge numbers on vault, so they still got a margin they can work with through the Cal Bears as Priscilla Park for Arkansas on the uneven bars. Priscilla Park doing a very high pack salto, higher than most, impressive. MJ on beam has a very important role. Front aerial connected into that layout step out. I think the most important person in the competition is the one that goes up after a teammate has a fall. Has to do her normal, which is so much easier said than done. Aaliyah Finnegan getting some words from floor coach Courtney McCool Griffith, 2004 Olympic silver medalist. I'm impressed with MJ's ability to remain calm. Round off one at, or cartwheel one and a half. Good routine. Good for them to get back on track. I think the judges heard us, Allie. KJ Johnson, the high score on floor exercise so far in these NCAA championships, 9-9-5. Nine, nine, well deserved. Aaliyah Finnegan now. She will be an Olympian this summer, competing for the Philippines. Anna Paula Gutierrez now follows Widner's 985. Hey, I tell you what, if you're Stanford, rock these couple balls, put some pressure on the Bears. Wow. Well, there's one. Wow. Fantastic vault. Aaliyah on floor doing an Arabian double front into a stag jump. Gets one tenth bonus for that connection. Stanford doing exactly what the goal is. Each vault is building, getting better and better. Maya Lazan, the fifth gymnast to go here for Cal. They do have that 9, 2, 8, 7, 5. There's three, there are three high scores they have on this event, all in the 9, 8s. Good scores, good enough. Just need to stay on here, do their last two gymnasts. Maya showing off her flexibility. And Aaliyah Finnegan, two and a half punch front. Difficult tumbling pass, especially at the end of the routine. I can feel LSU's confidence. Big test for Maya on beam right now. Back handspring, back handspring, layout step out. She looks cool. She looks calm. You would never know a berth at the NCAA Finals are just two routines away for the Cal Bears. Priscilla Rock. Park on bars, a 9.8. Jensen Scalzo now takes to the event for the Razorbacks. Jaeger release move on bars, caught that on her fingertips. Dismount on beam, double twist, wow. And that, that, that is what veterans do, Allie, and they hit when you need to hit, and the junior does it for the Bears. What stood out to me in that routine was she was patient, took her time. Sometimes when you're nervous, you just want to get off the beam. Watch the height the and the stuck landing right there. Liz Crandall Howell, the right of your screen. Obviously, loving that. Anna Roberts now here in the anchor position for Stanford. Coaches don't tell their athletes to try to stick a landing often, but right now, you just, you gotta stick it and see where the chips fall. Yeah, I don't think Anna gets the credit she deserves oh! on this event. So clean. What a great rotation for Stanford to end on. Anaya Smith from Arizona State hates that vault. 
because she's the top scorer right now with a 9.9375. And we'll see if Anna Roberts can take over that lead. Haley Bryan on floor now. For enhanced spring, double front. Only one in the competition to do that. Aliyah Finnegan, a 9.9625. So the national championship for KJ Johnson lasted about a minute and a half. Her own teammate Finnegan moves ahead of her 9.95. And now Finnegan has the lead on this event. Gabby Perea here in the anchor spot. Gabby on beam doing a wolf turn requires a lot of flexibility in your knees and your hips. Front toss connected into back tuck. Slight wobble there, does a good job correcting herself. Anna Roberts, 9.95. That is a career high for a score for her and that moves her into the top spot. On vault as Haley, Haley Bryant finishes up floor exercise. And you can see bottom right of your screen, the Cal Bears, even before this Gabby Perea score comes in, they have a slight lead over Stanford. Stanford's done competing, but it did get a little interesting. Another 10th or so leading up to this routine for Stanford, and it would have put them in the lead. It would have put pressure on Gabby to hit this routine, but now pressure's off. Wow, unique dismount for Gabby on beam. Maddie Jones on bars, finishing things off with the Razorbacks there. Beautiful pack salto transition. I love that pirouette right on top of the bar. Hitting that handstand. Just the dismount, double layout. Oh, almost got that stick. Bent her legs a little bit too much on that dismount, but great routine. Fifth year gymnast, Emma Silberman from Maryland here on ball. 995, the number to beat. Wow, very difficult round off, full twist onto the board, back pike off. Don't see that vault very often. Head coach Brent Nelligan in his 15th season as the head coach of Maryland. Had a very good season this year. Doing an outstanding job there with the Terrapins. Haley Bryant, 9.9375. What a rotation for the LSU Tigers. Number one in the nation on this event. And you know, what do you do after a great rotation to anchor it? Well, you put up Kaya Johnson. He's one of the best. I tell you what, if this comes down to floor, pack a lunch if you're going against LSU. <laughs> pack a big lunch, John. Well, Kaya Johnson's season ended in heartbreaking fashion last year. A torn Achilles on floor at Kentucky. Now, coming into this season, she told me the pressure was really on herself because she wanted to be as good as she was before the injury. I asked her this week, now that her team found themselves at the national championship, how she met expectations. She said, truthfully, I think I've exceeded them. She is one special human being, great gymnast, but we talked to Jay Clark about her and he says, I don't know if I know a better human being than Kaya Johnson. And I was there when she tore her Achilles and just the, the air went out of the arena. It was at Kentucky and even the Kentucky fans and the Kentucky team appreciate Kaya Johnson, but man, what a comeback it has been. Skylar Killo Wilhelm finishing off her all around day. It's been a great day for her. Kaya finishing up with a double pike. Keep in mind, Skylar, she may be able to hear the floor music, the crowd, the distraction. These are things that are hard to practice and prepare for, handling it so well. Nice LSU contingent here in Dickey's Arena chanting LSU, and I can't imagine those fans are going to be off the wall on Saturday. Over on the uneven bars, Jade, Jada Mangahas, now the senior from Allentown, Pennsylvania. A 
Parquet's gymnast. Parquet's producing many great gymnasts over the years. The extension of her shoulders is what stands out to me. Stretching all the way to the ceiling. Full in dismount. How about that, Allie? She sat this whole competition. She had to do the uneven bars. And at the last three minutes of the meet, she finally gets her turn and delivers. That is impressive. It is so hard when you have to wait that long not to get in your own head and overthink. It's also really hard to keep your body warm. I'm impressed with that routine. The final gymnast here in this fourth rotation, Lily Smith. 9.9125 on beam, the last rotation. 9.925 on bar. Started slow on vault with just a 9.725, or she may be in the hunt for that top all-around score, which currently is held by Haley Bryant. That should be a big score. Her attention to detail, the form in the tumbling, her fingertips to her toes. Watch the body position in this. Her toes are even pointed in that first tumbling pass. Ending with a front hand spring, one and a half to straddle jump. Gets one tenth bonus for that straddle jump at the end of the routine. Beautiful gymnast to watch. Looking forward to the next few years watching Lily Smith. I know Courtney Capetz Carter, the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, is excited about that too. There she is getting a hug from maybe the greatest collegiate gymnast of all time, seven time NCAA champion. Cal's going to advance. They survive, Allie, the difficult journey to the NCAA finals. Well deserved. These athletes have worked. Hard. They've put in so much dedication, and to see it all come together for them is just wonderful. And the LSU Tigers, they advance with their second highest score at an NCAA championship. The Stanford Cardinal, though, Allie, they, they may be a little disappointed, but they gave this a run. Head coach Tabitha Yim has got to be proud of that squad. Yeah, they're not that far off from Cal. They should be really proud of themselves. They finished on vault so strong. That's got to give them a lot of confidence going into next year. Arkansas Razorbacks, a few tears over there. Cinderella story coming out of that region. Jordan Weber doing an amazing job, though, with that team. Watch out for the Razorbacks. But the joy in the corner of the Cal Bears and the LSU Tigers. They make it to the destination. Only two teams can advance. And those teams are the LSU Tigers and the Cal Bears. They were the favorites coming in and they get the job done. The Stanford Cardinal, they made it interesting for much of this competition. Not the night the Arkansas Razorbacks wanted to have. Those two teams, the dream ends here in the semifinals. Later today, Oklahoma, Florida, Utah, and Alabama. This is the semifinal a lot of people have been looking forward to. Taylor Davis is with the current leader in the all-around. My opinion, the best gymnast in the country, <laughs> Haley Bryant. Taylor? 
Say it again for the people in the back, John. Haley is with me now. We meet again, Haley. You and your team move on to the finals for an NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Talk to me a little bit about the emotion of this team coming into this week, knowing what all you went through last season to get here. I think we were just so excited to be here. We really went into the gym and just focused on every little detail, the landings, and we just worked so hard. And I'm just so proud of this team for absolutely everything inside the gym and outside the gym. And we're not done yet, and we're very, very excited to compete for something so big and something we've dreamed about literally since we've come to LSU. So we're just really excited to keep going. Like you said, this team is more than equipped to take a championship back to Baton Rouge. One more meet between you and that title. What will be the focus heading into Saturday? I think just not making it more than it has to be. Obviously, we're going to come in on Saturday knowing there's a national championship on the line, but the most important thing is to take it just like one more competition, one skill at a time, one event at a time, be present all the way through. And if we do that, if we do our normal gymnastics, the results are going to play out just as they should. Amazing. Congratulations Thank on you. today. Go enjoy it with your team. Thank you so much. Just another day in the office for Haley Bryant, Allie. Yeah, what a competition she had. This vault was fantastic. The height on that, the extension of her body. On bars, such a good release move. This dismount, double front half twist. Makes everything look easy. Standing punch front, so few gymnasts in the world can do that. Impressive the way Haley was able to handle this pressure. I love this first pass. Double front. Front layout into front one and a half. Makes it look like she's just having fun in the gym. Would never know the amount of pressure they were under today. It was a great semifinal number one, but only two teams can live on. And those two teams are the Tigers and the Bears. Congratulations to them. Coming up next, it's the point. Then at 9 Eastern, you better come back and join us. We'll be right back here in Fort Worth for the next semifinal. OU, Utah, Alabama, Florida battle it out for their two spots. In the country, they're going to start on vault. This is Faith Torres getting things started. Your Chanko one and a half twist under rotated that under this type of pressure. I think she tried too hard to go for that stick. It's very common to try so hard to stick and you forget to do the proper technique to get you the amount of height that you need to stick that landing. As you mentioned, they can drop that score. They're gonna they're gonna want to drop that score, Allie, but the first gymnast yeah. of the meet in a elimination situation, and all we've talked about leading up to this competition, dominant OU. OU's gonna advance. And I'm not saying the, the sky is falling, but Faith Torres just had a miss. They've gotta hit five. These teams are gonna be super tight and super competitive. Even the best may be showing some jitters. Emily Morgan now for Utah. They had some jitters in the regional round. Barely advanced, but they did. New life here, but they're gonna have to do better than they did in that regional final. Even though this is a big competition, the irony is you just have to do your normal exactly like that. Easier said than done under this amount of pressure. Chloe LeCourcier will lead things off for Alabama on the uneven bars. Chloe is the type of gymnast where you see her dancing and singing right up until the moment that she salutes. She is, yeah, she's a tremendous athlete too. The coaches feel that her positive attitude and her love for the sport is what makes her the right person to start this team off. Going to do a full in dismount. Great start for Alabama. Chloe's just a freshman, and I tell you what, she is going to be such a huge part of this Alabama team in the next few years. Has that ability, that, that determination and that competitiveness and the athletic talent. Look out. Fantastic start on beam. It is tough event to start on. That's going to give them a big boost of confidence. Victoria Wynn will start things off for Florida. Florida putting up their best score of the entire season in that regional final. They hosted it in Gainesville, and they looked like a team that said, hey, we want that national title back in Florida. They looked outstanding. Early pressure now for the Oklahoma Sooners. Kira Wells, second gymnast to go. Five scores count. They're going to want to drop that Torres, 
Same ball we just saw, Yurchenko, one and a half. Great ball for them. I think, Allie, I think the coaches are going to tell the rest of that lineup, hop forward. Don't try to stick. They, can't, they can afford hops. They can't afford falls. I agree. I think the coaches are going to tell them, do not think about the stick. My coaches would always tell me to pay attention to the round off. If you do the first part right, the stick will come. Kenneth Smith now on balance beam for Utah. Very good start for them. 9.925. For Emily Morgan, are you kidding me? Anytime you can start with a 9-9 nine, nine or better for your first gymnast up, especially on beam, you have done something special. Look out for the Utes. Could this be a sign of things to come today? I completely agree. They look confident and calm. Lily Hudson follows Le Corsier's 9.9125. So a couple of huge opening scores here in the semifinal number two. I am impressed with this Utah team on beam. Taking it one skill at a time, being decisive. They look confident. Head coach Ashley Johnston says that Lily is the rock for the team. Another stuck landing. Two routines for Alabama. They did two routines. They could, could not do them better. Execution I, was great. Landings were perfect. I agree. Excellent start for them. This has been an exciting competition so far. Another great beam routine. I don't know if many athletes would pick to start on balance beam, but they are showing, Utah is showing that they own this event. I would not want to start on beam. I wouldn't want to finish on beam or do it in between. I just, I'll be a three event person. How about that? Ellie Lazari, the second gymnast for Florida, following a 9.875. So every team starting with a great score except the Sooners. Although Kira Wells went up next and put up a 9-9, so good recovery there. Jordan Bauer is now involved. Oh! Wow! Chanko, one and a half, same vault that we've seen. Very uncharacteristic. Absolute it, magician, though, not to go down onto the mat. Impressive the way she was able to save it. My coaches used to say the hardest position in the world is to be number one because all eyes are on you and everybody is watching you. They have all of the pressure on them right now. They just have to relax and do what they do every single day in the gym. No more, no less. Grace McCallum now on the balance beam for Utah. John, down here by the Utah Corral, a lot of conversation about coming out of the gate hot in this one. Like you mentioned, a fall on beam, two falls on bars and regionals. Obviously, they got out of it. But Miley O'Keefe actually told me, we know we can perform well under pressure, but we don't want to have to face that today. They were doing intra-squad squad starting on beam to prepare for this, trying to stay ahead of what is sure to be a very close competition here tonight. Florida starting off so strong on floor. They look calm. They look ready. Their endurance looks great. McKenna Smith, 9.925. A pair of 9.925s for Utah to start this rotation. Oh, my goodness. And this is really one of their best events, too. So you want to get those big numbers certainly everywhere. But your best event, that's where you separate yourself. You can see the score tower on the right hand of your screen as Shania Adams for Alabama mounts the bars. All the scores for every athlete on the team will be to the right. What you'll notice about Shania is her form and her extension. Judges are looking for handstands on top of the bar like that. Wow. Almost overshot it. Took a lot of arm flexibility and strength to save that. Impressive fight through that routine. I give her credit for going for that handstand. Sooners troubles continue on vault. Jordan Bowers, a 9-4-5. They're gonna count that score. 
three gymnasts yet to go. They're outstanding. They can go nine, nine to ten, but the pressure has just mounted in ways the Sooners did not expect. This form is exquisite. Oh, this is heartbreaking and devastating. They're all, as an athlete, it's I know how this feels. They work so hard. They are undefeated. They are the best team. I know how much they want this. I think that they're just too nervous and getting in their head too much. Very, we're not used to seeing this from them, but at the end of the day, they're human. And that's the thing about gymnastics is it's very mental and it's really hard. You said it, Anya Pilgrim now for Florida. On floor exercise, Abby Paulson getting ready to go on balance beam. I'm not sure if the other teams are paying attention to what's happening around the gym, but the prohibited favorite, the team that was going to be an automatic to advance to the finals, it was about what of the other three were going to sneak in there. Now they are in a hole, and they are going to have a long, hard road to dig out of it. Anya's first pass, that one and a half to double tuck, was beautiful. What I like about Anya is she's got this calm confidence to her. You would never know she's a freshman. Abby on beam fell on that in warm up. Glad to see she was able to make that correction. I've really enjoyed watching Anya this season. I admire her confidence, but she has this calm energy about her that you forget she's competing. She handles the pressure so well. Anya Pilgrim doing what she has done all season long. One of the best freshmen in the country, in my opinion. Another great beam routine. The key, in my opinion, to being good on beam is you pretend you are on a straight line on the floor. You don't change anything when you go up on those four inches, and that is exactly what they're doing. Maddie Walagora, the fourth gymnast to go here for Alabama on bars, having a solid rotation. Shania Adams, a 985, that's her low score. Hannah Scheibel now. She has never competed after two misses in her entire career at Oklahoma, and she's doing that now. I dare say both of these vaults have got to be great or Oklahoma may not be able to come back from this. Different vault than we've seen from Pike Pass. Very good vault. Maddie, excellent bar routine. The height on her release move. Alabama on fire on bars. Every team is on fire and there's one team that's burning down in the first rotation. I hate to say it. And it's Oklahoma. They're going to count a score in the 9-4s and a score in the 9-3s on an event. Get a load of this. Number one in the country on this event. This is uncharted territory for the Sooners. Sloan Blakely for the Florida Gators. Somebody that really thrives as the season moves on. Tends to kind of feel her way through the middle part and beginning of the season, but when it gets to the postseason, Sloan Blakely, she can perform. Meanwhile, Miley O'Keefe, one of the best ever to mount the balance beam, goes for Utah, following a 9.95 from Abby Paulson. A highlight for me watching Sloan on floor is seeing her personality. I love watching her on the other events as well, the intensity, the focus, and the moment she lands it, you get to see her bright, lovely personality. It's a highlight for me. Miley gonna do a difficult connection on beam, side aerial to lay out, step out, gets four tenths bonus for that difficult skill. Gotta be a confidence booster to go up on beam after your teammates have hit some of their best routines. One and a half to punch front full. These routines take tremendous amount of endurance. Watching her, she doesn't look out of breath, looks so easy for her. 
by Catherine Gatorfall, dismount, stuck. Utah can't be better. They've absolutely been lights out. 995 for Abby Paulson. Miley O'Keefe usually outscores Abby Paulson. What do you do? Can we have a, maybe our first 10 alley of these NCAA semifinals? I think she actually wobbled on her side aerial layout step out, but I think it's going to be a big number. It's interesting because they did struggle in their regional final, but sometimes when you struggle, it allows you to learn from those mistakes. That's kind of the silver lining of it. So an interesting turn of events here for Oklahoma. Audrey Davis not scheduled to go on vault. They're going to put her in. She does a Yurchenko one and a half, but Allie, they took her out because she always has a leg break on her pre-flight, which is generally a tenth off, which makes it a 10-0 start value, almost a 9-9 start value. Head coach KJ Kindler says Audrey Davis is a sure thing. Chenko one and a half. Over rotation, but better than an under rotation for Audrey. A huge step. And if they're applying the code exactly how it should be, that is a two-tenth step. Form break on the pre-flight. This score might be in the nine sevens. This will be low, the lowest Oklahoma vault rotation since, get this, January 4th of 2008, 16 years ago. It's heartbreaking. You know how hard all of these gymnasts work and, and I'm sure they're devastated, but the meet is not over until it's over. So they have to stay strong, be confident going into the rest of the events. And as my coaches would say, you have to turn the page. Jaylene Gilstrap for Utah now. On balance beam, Danny Ferris. She has been another sensational freshman. This freshman group for Florida, so important for their team. Wow, what a save. Good save on Beam. Missed her foot. That was impressive. That skill was called a wolf turn. That four-inch mat being pulled out of the floor is not a deduction. It's just for extra safety and protection on the body. I can't spring layout two feet has to remain the layout position throughout the entire flip. Otherwise, she could risk getting devalued to a pike. Should be no issue today. Oh! Looks like she missed her front foot. It's hard to spot the beam when you're doing a switch leap like that. It's kind of a fluke thing sometimes. Your foot just slips off. Here's the thing about this Utah beam rotation. <laughs> that doesn't matter. They have got some outstanding scores. In fact, they will have a higher score than they have had the entire season. Good for them. That's well-deserved. Even with that fall. Danny finishing up strong on that floor routine. I think for Florida, this is going to be a good confidence booster, a good way to get settled into the competition before they head to vault and then bars and beam. Watch the front leg just totally slipped. Just the beam is only four inches wide. It's very unforgiving. Sometimes you might feel you're perfectly on and your foot just slips. You're at the wrong angle. The star of this Alabama team, Luisa Blanco. The final gymnast here. And we have some individuals competing as well along with the team. This is Gabby Wilson from Michigan. Gabby's vault was fantastic. Elbow straight on the table. So much amplitude. Louisa is a fierce competitor. Hitting handstands like that. Judges allow for a 10 degree window at the top of the bar. Going to do a full in dismount. Legs together. Stuck landing. I think Alabama is going to be really happy with that. Assistant. Assistant coach Amelia Hundley giving her a hug. Watch this, the toe point, the body position floating from the high bar to the low bar. In the dismount, the knees and toes together. So difficult when you're tired at the end of the routine. Let's go over to balance beam. The individual competing along with Utah, Selena Harris. 
from UCLA, an outstanding, really all-around competitor for the Bruins. Just competing here on beam, though. UCLA got bumped in the regional regionals by Arizona State. So Selena here competing as an individual. Leanne Wong, one of the best in the country in the all-around, finishing things off for the Florida Gators on floor. What you'll notice about Selena on beam is how fluid she is. She continues to move throughout her dance and her leap. That's what the judges are looking for. Leanne Wong on floor opening up with a massive double layout. Front toss on beam. This routine has been solid. Selena does a good job continuing to move, but I can see she's taking deep breaths, taking her time. One and a half stick, that's gonna be a big score. Leanne Wong on this floor, Tina, 9.9625 to pass Alabama for second. This top three team's gonna be super close after one. Round up with half to a punch front full. Leanne Wong has her eyes set on Paris this summer. She is training collegiate and elite gymnastics at the same time while attending school at Florida, and she hopes to be in Paris with Team USA. Another Michigan gymnast competing here as an individual. This is Carly Bauman. She's the team captain here in 2024 part of that 2021 national championship team for the Michigan Wolverines. Pay attention to the height on this Jaeger. Connected right into the overshoot. You notice she wasn't in the handstand position. That's okay because she connected it immediately from the release move on the high bar. Double front dismount, hard landing to spot. Scott Sherman there, congratulating her, longtime coach at Michigan and the bar guru for the Wolverine. Pay attention to the height, the way she finishes her rotation so quickly, so but, high in the air. That's awesome. Connected immediately, horizontally, is over horizontal on that low bar, which is what the judges are looking for. We're gonna see a lot of things that are world-class today. And one of them is coming up on floor exercise and it's Jade Carey. Amongst the best in the world on floor exercise and vault, in fact, an Olympic gold medalist. Yes, you heard me right, from Tokyo on this event. Double layout with a full twist. There are so few people in the world they can do a tumbling pass like that. Keep in mind too, today, both semifinals combine the top score on each individual event and the all around will be your NCAA champion. So individual All-American honors as well are decided today. Haley Bryant currently in the lead in the all around with a 39.7125, but athletes like Jade Carey, certainly that's something that she could accomplish. Great landing. Judges told us when we talked to them, ask yourself, did she want to take a step or did she need to? And she wanted to take a step. That was such a good routine, so controlled on that last tumbling pass. Pay attention to this. We see double layout sometimes, but she adds a full twist to it. And then watch her feet position when she lands. This chest is up controlled. So 
not to take away from some of the great gymnastics that we saw in this first rotation, but the headline is about what went wrong. And it's the Oklahoma Sooners on vault, something I think a lot of us never thought we would see, Allie. Yeah, this was devastating. I, I think it's a reminder, no matter what you're ranked, everyone is human. We all feel the emotions. There is so much pressure on them. KJ and Lou Ball, husband and wife, talking about vault. KJ Kimmler actually began the rotation at the end of the vault runway, John, and about halfway through made her way down to be with the team in the corral. Really unchartered territory. I looked at the athletes, a lot of them very quiet. Eventually they got in a team huddle. Danny Seavers really leading the message saying, hey, if anyone is equipped to come back from this, it is us. But definitely not a situation the Sooners are used to being in, John. I'll tell you what, something we did not think we were going to see. We had thought three teams fighting for that second spot. We've got three teams fighting for two. Oklahoma on the outside looking in. We'll learn more about them when we come back. NCAA championships. Meet summary after one. Utah, a season high score on the balance being their best event. They lead the way and Two missed vaults for Oklahoma puts them in dead last. But we've got what looks like a three-team race right now, unless Oklahoma can pull a rabbit out of their hat. We shall see. If anybody can do it, it is them. Individual scores from that first rotation. Great individual performances. A couple 995s in there. And we will keep an eye on those and see how those hold up for some individual titles. Skylar Drazer here for Florida getting things started on vault. They had a good start as well, that first rotation. Oh, wow. Kurchenko, one and a half. I've seen her stick this vault many times, so happy to see it. She did it here. Danielle Seavers, the first gymnast to go for the Sooners. The Sooners are the number one ranked team on all of their first three events they're competing today. So vault, bars, and beam, they're number one in the country. They're going to have to show that the rest of the way. And there you go. Could one hit lead to another they have got to be lights out that was impressive by danny the way that she was able to handle the pressure that was just about as good of a bar routine as she could have done lily hudson leading things off for alabama such a reliable starting gymnast on this event and one of those two that yeah first up but certainly can go nine nine mckenna smith Feeling the groove here in Dickey's Arena, jam jamming on the sidelines, getting ready to lead things off for Utah. Lily reworked her routine earlier in the season. You saw that front aerial into back handspring. She used to do a layout, step out out of it, reworked the routine and added in a switch leap half to be able to get that 10-0 start value. You switch leap, switch leap connected. McKenna's first tumbling pass was good. Slight wobble on the landing. Here's the skill. Lily added in, switch lead pass. Round up one and a half dismount. Great start for Alabama. I talked to assistant coach Justin Sprang from Alabama before the meet. I said, how'd, how'd warm-ups go? How's the team feeling? And he said, light years different from yesterday during the training session. They were a little off, struggled a little bit here and there. And he said, it's a different team today. And so far in this competition, they are absolutely that. Victoria Wynn now for Florida, the second gymnast to go. Skylar Drazer, a 9.875 in the leadoff spot. Danielle Sievers for Oklahoma, a 9.9 .9 in the leadoff spot. Huge straddle jump from McKenna. Victoria doing your Chanko one and a half out of a 10.0. It's improved this vault so much. Judges would prefer to see an over rotation versus an under rotation. Kat Lavasse with the next gymnast to go. Got a smile on her face, but Got to wonder how fast that heart is racing underneath there right now. Knowing what is ahead of them to try to dig out of this. 
Maddie Walagora follows Lily Hudson's 9-9. Nine -nine. Kat has to take it one skill at a time. Kat looks calm. Going to do a blindfold, connected into a double back dismount. Gets one tenth bonus for this connection. That's the Oklahoma team that we know. Took the words right out of my mouth. They've got to be like that the rest of the way. Down 1.1 to put that in perspective. That's three touchdowns and you're already in the second half of the football game. Teams don't come back from that. And what Oklahoma needs to do is they need to eat into that lead a little bit. They might need some help from the other teams, but they've got to chip away two, three tenths of rotation, try to get it close at the end and try to make that leap if at all possible. Jaden Rucker now for Utah. Follow McKenna, follows McKenna Smith's 9, 8, 8, 7, 5. Oh! Just gonna say Maddie is so rock solid on this event. Fell on that tough three-quarter jump. Gonna be a five-tenth deduction for that on floor as well. Landed short on that full in, a hard pass to do. It's not, it's not uncommon in a big competition like this to see a lot of mistakes because of the pressure. You might think because we're at this big stage that everyone's going to be in their perfect shape. There's no such thing. It's not abnormal to see going out of bounds, falling. So I'm honestly not surprised with what we're seeing right now. Kat Lavasser, 9.95. I just explained how she might, the OU might need help from other teams. Well, they just got a little bit of help from Alabama and Utah. Florida now on ball. Anya Pilgrim follows a 985 from Victoria Wynn. Wow. Just floated in the air. Made that look so easy. Jaden finishing strong for Utah. I love the look Anya Pilgrim has on her face all the time. It's almost like a sheepish grin, like, that was easy. I do that all the time. It's almost like she doesn't know she's Anya Pilgrim, and she doesn't realize how good she is at gymnastics. Look at the form in the air, hips open, knew exactly where she was. There it is. There's the grin. Faith Torres now. She let off the vault, and that's where things started to go wrong for the Sooners, but things have gotten right here, but they, they have given up all margin for error, have the Sooners got to be perfect the rest of the way. Ooh. Good start to the star routine. Double layout dismount. Good routine. Had a little break on that pack salto in her feet and then that small hop. And this is going to sound crazy. They're going to want to drop that because they can only count nine nines. Right here was a little bit short. You saw she had to pull her shoulders back and bend her elbows. Sometimes when you're nervous, you hold on a little bit longer. Try to play it safe. Ella Burge is now in a pressure situation for Alabama on beam. Maddie Walagora, just a 9.025. This is gymnastics, ladies and gentlemen. It is not over until it's over. Already you're seeing some mistakes from these other teams and that opens the door This the is, team's hitting. This is a critical spot for Ella right here. Going to do a one arm back handspring. Very difficult into a layout step out. <sighs> and just like that, just like that, the tide turns again. No pun intended, but they will count a fall. Went crooked on that layout step out. It's hard to correct yourself when you feel that you're crooked. This is the thing about sports, is you can do everything right, you can be so prepared, but when that moment comes, any level of doubt or anything can make things go a different way than you want it to.
I can see Ella smiling. She told me that smiling helps her calm down. Almost. And Big mistake there again. Really important not to compound your mistakes because you could still score above that 9025. So she's got it. It's important that she hits well here the rest of the way. Every little tenth makes a difference. So Ella Burgess follows a fall. Unfortunately, she has a fall of her own. Now we go to Utah where they had a fall from Jaden Rucker who scored a 90875. Four gymnasts to go for Utah. This is Abby Paulson. She is a veteran. She's handled big moments many, many times. But now maybe the biggest moment of her career trying to get to the finals are the Utah Utes. A nice front through to round if I can't spring two and a half. Good start. Freshman Danny Ferris getting ready to go on ball. She is a rock star on this event. She absolutely flies. Ball we saw. Florida's landings have been dialed in. I am impressed. Danny Ferris loving it. Gator chomp all the way down the runway. A lot to be happy right now about if you're the Florida Gators. The only team in this competition so far without a major break. One and a half to punch layout. Stuck that landing. I like how the layout, she threw her arms out, made it look extra floaty. I don't know if floaty is actually a word, but it absolutely describes exactly what you, you wanted to. Extra floaty, you made that's it, a good thing. I think you made it up. I got it from you. I'll take credit for that. Gabby Gladio on beam now. Following Ella Burgess's 9.05. They're going to have to count that score. Reagan Smith now for Oklahoma on bars. Faith Torres a 9.85. They don't want to count that score. And if anybody can get Sooner Nation fired up, it is Reagan Smith. Reagan doing a pack salto on bars. Reagan has a ton of elite international experience. Helps her in situations like this. Double layout dismount. Gabby has been solid on this event so far. Started off with a huge back handspring layout two feet. Coaching staff from Alabama said they've had a great couple weeks of practice before this championship. Really said they got better the last couple weeks. Good finish, which usually you're just trying to maintain what you've done all season, but they said they've actually improved. Got an extra half, tenth, tenth here and there, and that is critically important here in the postseason. Unfortunately, some trouble on beam, but Gabby Gladio gets things right for them. Abby Paulson stops the bleeding, as we like to say, gets a 9.9. Jaylene Gilstrap now. Danny Ferris for Florida put up a 9.85. Leanne Wong, the fifth gymnast to go. Wow, that first tumbling pass on floor, what I liked about it is the second flip was so much higher than the first. Different fault than we've seen. Wow. And that is big, because I'll tell you, I, I love Leanne Wong's gymnastics, absolutely one of the best, but that is a vault she rarely sticks, and it's a tough one to stick. Kind of a different vault than we've seen from other people, but man, no doubt about it right there. Impressive. Leanne's vault is hard because she does a round off and a half turn onto the table. So because of that half turn, it's very difficult to time your half turn to get that block off the table. newest, biggest moment is Shania Adams on balance beam. Gabby Gladio definitely got things straightened out with that 9.875, but two yet to go. They already are counting a fall, so every wobble, every mistake that potentially these gymnasts make here in the last two, Shania Adams and Luisa Blanco, are going to count on that team score. Wow, triple wolf turn. The type of skill that we see 
at the elite level Olympic Games. Front aerial. Audrey Davis now, maybe the best bar worker in the country. She absolutely is a clinic on this event and she needs to be right here. 9-9 from Reagan Smith. Watch the flexibility and the height on that. Fingertip oh. catch. Another fall off the balance beam. And this is unbelievable. We saw three mistakes from Oklahoma on vault, now three from Alabama on beam. Yeah, gymnastics looks easy. Good dismount from Audrey Davis. Gymnastics looks easy, but people don't understand how mentally hard it is. Dismount round off, one and a half twist. Sometimes when you're on the podium, the beam is actually shakier and bouncier. And it can be really hard to get that right timing. It feels different than it feels in the practice gym. And also these gymnasts are used to having their teammates right next to them on the same level. Here they're higher than them, so they might not be able to hear their teammates while they're going. Ellie Lazari follows the 9.9375 from Leanne Wong. What a rotation for Florida. This one just icing on the cake for the Gators. Meanwhile, over on floor exercise, Miley O'Keefe still trying to erase that 90875 from Jaden Rucker are the Utah Utes. Kelly Lazari fingertips onto that table. I wasn't sure if she got too high on the table, but the timing of that was excellent. What you'll notice about this floor routine is the fun choreography and how much fun Miley has when she performs it. They are going to count that along with the 905. Luisa Blanco in desperation mode for Alabama now. They cannot, it might already be too late as far as counting misses, but they absolutely need a huge one here. This is a tough position to be in for Luisa. I'm curious, she does a back handspring layout, layout. Very risky. I'm curious if she's going to play it safe and do one layout. Jordan Bowers getting ready to go here on the uneven bar. She is the anchor for the Sooners. Well, John, the nerves have really been palpable down here on the floor this rotation. A fall from Luisa Blanco. This is such unexpected results in the first two rotations. And Ali, you mentioned the mental challenges. I've seen them all handling it different ways, stepping off to the side to be alone, grabbing a teammate to talk. Some have even put on headphones. The intensity of this meet really getting to some of the best athletes in the country. We can feel it up here, honestly. The, the, usually we're having fun. This is as intense of an NCAA, NCAA championship as I have seen. This is incredible. I think Oklahoma's got to be happy with that bar rotation to be able to come back after an upsetting vault rotation to me shows me why they are the undefeated team. Louisa finishing up with a round off one and a half dismount. As shocking as that Oklahoma vault rotation was on that first event, I think this Alabama beam rotation has eclipsed that one with four falls in one rotation. I'm not sure if that's happened in Alabama history, to be honest with you. 
Wow, Grace McCallum now, the anchor position for Utah. Again, a critical routine there. They're trying to erase a miss. And with the Grace McCallum hit, this will be another outstanding rotation for the Utes. They were in first place coming into the second rotation. Jade Carey, Olympic finalist on this event. Outstanding floor rotation, trying to chase down Haley Bryan for that all-around title. In both boxes, you have two Olympic teammates from the 2020 Olympic Games. Pretty cool. Wow, wow. A Yurchenko double twist, and I said wow because that is the type of ball that's done at the Olympic Games. And she kicks out of that, like her arms are popping out of that twist, looking at the ground. No one does it quite like Jade Carey. What's impressive is she lifts her shoulders, has the hip rise, takes a beat, and then twists. So she's able to get so much height. to one and a half. Beautiful control on that floor routine in that last pass. Utah looks like a different team than we saw in that regional round of competition through two events. They are outstanding. Despite that Rucker mistake, second up. They erase that with five great scores. Isabella Magnelli now for Kentucky, competing as an individual. Here she is on beam, an event she is exceptional on. Three skills connected in a row gets one-tenth bonus for the difficulty of that. Gabby Wilson from Michigan, next to go on bars. She got a 9.85 on vault in her opening rotation. I watched Gabby in practice yesterday and I was blown away. That release move was caught on her fingertips. I was blown away by how much improvement she has. She looks dialed in, she looks confident. I'm really hoping that she has the competition that she practiced yesterday. Wow. Gotta be happy with that one. Isabella Magnelli as well. Nice performance from her. We talked about the individual champions from Oklahoma or lack thereof, but right now, Audrey Davis leading that bar rotation with a 9.9625. Raina Worley came back for a fifth year, had an outstanding season with the Kentucky Wildcats and helped Kentucky to one of their greatest regular seasons in the history of their program, just to have their hearts broken by the Arkansas Razorbacks, who denied them their ticket here as a team to these national championships. But Raina Worley, she has been something special. This is her final routine as a collegiate gymnast, and she will be missed. I've known Raina Worley since she was seven years old. A young gymnast coming out of Virginia Techniques in Christianburg, Virginia. And here she is. What a career it has been for her. 
Tim Garrison giving her a hug there. He will miss her. She has been a joy to watch, not just for Wildcat Nation, but for gymnastics fans across the country. Watch the control on this first pass. She opens up at the right time. And watch the control on this as well. The layout, she threw her arms out, chest open, helps her control that. What a second rotation it has been. It has been a good one for the Florida Gators and Taylor Davis is with the head coach, Jenny Rowland. Definitely has, John, thank you. Coach, we talk about it often in gymnastics. It can be anyone's day. It's about who stays true to everything they've practiced throughout this season. Through two rotations, how have you seen your team maintain composure in this environment? This team really, our, our vibes, we're just chill. Uh, and you know what? They're, they're doing what they do. We're working really hard to just control our controllables yeah. and be us. Um, you know, take every moment as it is make the most of it and you know keep taking it one step at a time the chill gators we love to see it thanks for the time let's go thank you go gators. well the florida gators are in a good spot right now they're in the top two and they've got a comfortable lead over the oklahoma sooners here's their ball tally watch the height and the way she floats into that landing half turn on spots that landing doesn't move her feet so difficult and then this what was so good about that was the height of the back handspring onto the table was on her fingertips, allowed her to get so much extension and amplitude off the table. A lot of people didn't know what to expect from the Florida Gators coming into this season. They lost so many potentially big scores from last year. Where would they come from? We're gonna take a look at that when we come back. We got some drama in Fort Worth. Utah, though, no drama there. They're on pace for the highest score in a semifinal or a final of an NCAA championship in history. Florida Gators in second. Oklahoma chipped away a little bit at it. But Alabama, a rough beam rotation puts them in the fourth spot. The Florida Gators lost so many routines last year, Allie, that potentially could score even 10.0s, most notably Trinity Thomas graduating. But they found it in a place very uncommon for a team to replace big scores in their freshmen. Yeah, this has been the year of the freshmen, in my opinion. They have been so instrumental to this team. The consistency, the stuck landings, the form, they've got the whole package. It really has been a year of growth. Each meet was just doing our job. We are very focused on getting 1% better outside the gym and inside the gym. People say that we have a very young team this year with six freshmen coming in. They filled a lot of spots in the lineups, which is amazing. I'm not really sure any of us expected how much we would be doing this year. Perfection from Anya Pilgrim. It's a 10.0. This freshman class truly has been invaluable. This team really can excel and soar when they're just calm, cool, collected, and, you know, having fun. Even with consistent contributions from inexperienced freshmen, Florida is the only team in the country that improved their overall score for eight consecutive weeks of season, a testament to how quickly these young Gators acclimated. When we come back, we'll see what else can happen in this unpredictable regional championship. Bama heads to the floor when we come back. I've been told, in case you're wondering, Lily Hudson is apparently the best spike ball player, but Gabby Gladio is the best defensive spike ball player. So if you're putting together a team, you want a defender, go Gladio. Here is the meet summary after the second rotation. Utah and Florida, they are in the spots you want to be. First and second, and they are there comfortably. Alabama and Oklahoma are the teams counting falls. Alabama, three falls on the balance beam. Oklahoma had to count two on vault. Alabama counting three, rather. They had four. So Florida and Utah, though, Unwavering here halfway through as we look at the individual scores. Jade Carey a 9-9 for that huge vault. 
And this meet, you know, you've been watching. We've got plenty of misses, which leads to enough drama. But Taylor, apparently you got more for us. <laughs> I've been busy down here, John. So in that last break, KJ Kindler noted that the beam was actually moving. She pulled representatives from the NCAA over. A couple gentlemen uh, actually pulled the mats apart, re-fixated some things to make sure the beam was more stable. Obviously, this interacted with their warm-up time. The judges said they would allow a typical warm-up process for the Sooners. So, not the typical day in any capacity, John. Could this be the moment the momentum changes? It's like the lights going out at the Super Bowl. You come back on the field, and the other team takes the lead. I got to tell you, John, I watched this Oklahoma team warm up on beam. I don't know if I saw one wobble. They were on. Emily Morgan will lead off for the red-hot Utah Utes on vault. Sloan Blakely for the Gators on an even bar. Chanko, one and a half twist. Step backwards. Vault is the only event where judges will take an under rotation deduction. So you're gonna get hit on that. That was a big step too. So not a fall and certainly the margin considerable when you're looking at trying to stay in the top two. But as we saw from Oklahoma, you don't want to let one mistake lead to another. Sloan Blakely finishes a strong bar routine. That was a big bar routine, Sloan hit that handstand so well at the end of her routine. Audrey Davis nailed that 9.9625 on bars. That's the high score there. Here she is in the leadoff spot on beam, a spot typically where she has just got ice in her veins. Maddie Walagora will lead off for Alabama on floor exercise. Crucial position for Audrey to be in right now. She's going to do a backhand spring layout. Step out. Front aerial connects it right into this pretty dance element right here. Maddie opening up with a high front double twist. Audrey proving why Coach Kindler calls her a sure thing. So much trust in Audrey in this position. This mount round off, double twist. I don't think she could have done it better than that. That's what the warm up looks like for Oklahoma on beam. That was huge for them. Oklahoma shaved two tenths off of the margin between them and that second place spot after the last rotation, but it still remained at almost a point. I said it was three touchdowns going into that rotation. It's probably still two touchdowns and a field goal. So they've got a lot of work to do, but they are doing what they said they needed to do, start shaving tents. And again, look for another opportunity. Alabama opened the door, they stepped through. Will Florida or Utah? Here's Ella Zervis now on ball. Chanko. One and a half. Good vault, stuck it. Good vault is right. Nailed it. I like the way she was able to bend her legs to absorb the landing. Watch the chest position as she lands the squat. Sometimes if the judges feel there's too much of a bent leg, they can take a small deduction. I'm curious if they will. Yeah, it happens fast in real time, obviously. In slow motion, you can see that knee bend, which typically would be a deduction. But overall, a very good vault. Emily Morgan, a 9-8 let off for Utah. Sloan Blakely let off with a 9-8-5. Victoria Wynn now takes to the uneven bars. Victoria warmed up one of the best half pirouettes coming up right here I've ever seen. She finished right in handstand. Ava Seekfeld now for Oklahoma on beam. Audrey Davis led off with a 9.9625. Allie, you said it was virtually perfect. The judges agreed with you. And that is now the highest score on beam in this competition. Audrey Davis leading two individual events. Well deserved for Audrey. That fell on the back handspring. The fourth, Layout, step fall, out. the fourth ball in this competition for Oklahoma. I don't think they had four falls combined the entire rest of the season.
Cam Machado for Alabama on four exercise. And Matty Baldagora led off with a 9 8 6 2 5. Ava doing a good job with the rest of the routine. It's not enjoyable to have to continue to do beam after you know you've made a mistake, but she did a good job finishing strong. Beautiful turns from Machado. Ashley Glenn will be the next vaulter. Ella Zerbis at 9.9125. At this point, Utah just needs to avoid any major mistakes. Just be consistent. Small steps will not change the outcome for them. Major breaks are the only thing they need to avoid. Can go one and a half. Big step forward. If it's three feet or more, the judges could take up to two tenths on that step. I think they may there, but it was a good vault. Judges would prefer to see over rotation than under rotation. The name of the game is it was a good enough vault. Alabama doing a good job coming back from beam. Jordan Bowers would be the next gymnast on balance beam. See so felt fell off the balance beam. 9.2875. So here's the situation for Oklahoma. If they had any chance left of moving into the second spot, they cannot have any major breaks. It was already that situation, but that ball, that can be dropped. They've got four athletes that all can go lights out 995 or better, but the margin is gone here on balance beam. Another fall, and this needs over for the Sooners. Ellie Lazari on bars, follows it 9.9125 for Florida. Not given an inch are the Gators. What stands out to me about watching Ellie on bars is her flexibility. Watch her straddle cast handstands. What's unique about Jordan's beam routine is she does about 30 seconds of dance. Oh, 30 seconds of dance before she does any acro series. Ellie. Put her knees down on that dismount. Might have miscalculated the timing or she was tired at the end of the routine. Takes a lot of endurance. Let go of the bar too early. Needed to hold on longer. Major break from Florida. All of these teams now except for Utah have had a major break. What does that mean for Florida? They got three gymnasts yet to go. They need three hits. And remember, Oklahoma was just a hair under a point behind the Florida Gators. And if they should count a miss on bars, it's suddenly going to be a new competition. Ella Burgess here on floor exercise for the Crimson Tide. Great routine from Jordan Bowers. It's not easy to go up after you know that you have to hit that routine because you don't want to count a fall. Ella doing a double pike on floor. What I love about this floor routine is Ella told me because of so many injuries, she never thought she'd be able to do a double back on floor. But now she does two of them. So she's really proud of this routine. Here's the second one, double tuck. Ashley Glenn got a 9-8, their second 9-8 for Utah on vault. McKenna Smith, the fourth gymnast here for the Utes. Half on front pike, wow. It's a difficult ball to stick. Amazing day has it been for Utah. A couple of big stuck vaults with two yet to go. They just need one good score out of those last two. And they are in business here after three. Faith Torres gets some last words from KJ Kindler. Jordan Bowers a 9.9375. And that is the story of Oklahoma though. They have six gymnasts on every event that can go well into the nine nines. That's what makes the mistakes they had on vault so 
shocking. But here's Faith Torres, the fourth gymnast yet to go. They need three big scores. Faith told me that she likes to listen to her teammates when she's competing. It helps calm her down. So hopefully in this moment, instead of worrying about the pressure, she can just listen to her teammates and pretend she's in practice. Very difficult side aerial into layout step out. No issues there. Anya Pilgrim will be the next gymnast for Florida on the uneven bar. She follows Elio Lazari's 9.1625. So the first flinch, if you will, from the Gators. Faith finishing a great routine. Anya on bars, important moment for her to get this team back on track. You want Anya in that next spot though, because she is calm, cool, and collected. You took the words out of my mouth, Allie, which is strange. She's only a freshman, but that's absolutely the gymnast I would want there too. And look at that. Huge pull in dismount. Looks so easy for her. Doesn't even look out of breath. Her coach, Owen Field, is way more excited than she is about that routine. Jaden Rucker had some trouble on floor exercise. Trying to get a fifth good score here for Utah on ball. Oh! Ruchenko, one and a half twist. I was watching the table. Looked like she got too high on her back handspring. Wasn't able to get her hands on the table to get enough lift off the table. So not a huge deal for Utah, but they will count a pair of 9-8s, which... At one point in time, I thought counting two 9-8s in this competition would be trouble. But with all the mistakes that we've seen, in particular from Alabama and Oklahoma, they will be just fine. Kat Lavasser follows Faith Torres's 9.9625. Number one in the team, number one team in the country is showing why here on this event. Ties Audrey Davis's high score on this event for the number one spot. Luisa Blanco on floor exercise. Luisa on floor doing a double tuck. Love the confidence and the way that she performs this routine. What you'll notice on beam is Kat's form. The extension of her knees and her toes. In my opinion, Kat has some of the best form in the world. His layout step out floated into that. It's a hard balance on beam to remember to keep the fluidity and the rhythm of the beam while also taking it one skill at a time. Luisa on floor, front fold to front layout. Oh, oh, Kat. Wow. Another fall in the beam. And that will just about do it for the Oklahoma Sooners. Hard to know what to say in this moment. I devastating. A stunned Sooner Nation. Skylar Drazer now. They are not done, the Florida Gators. Anya Pilgrim in 9.9. .9. Another freshman Drazer. Again, Florida trying to drop that 9.1625. Grace McCallum will be the anchor for Utah on vault. Jaden Rucker just a 9.6125. Skyler has been clutch for this team. She's been so consistent. Grace doing a unique fault that we haven't seen. It's a tough off, landed over that line. Those white lines are there for a guide, but the judges could take up to two tenths because she landed over the line. So a few small errors from Utah, landing deductions on their vault rotation, but at the end of the day, the name of the game is just don't have a major break and you have given yourself a chance. In fact, you probably punched your ticket. Lily Hudson.
fifth gymnast follows Luisa Blanco's 9.9. Good rotation here for the Crimson Tide. Reagan Smith, left hand at the end of your screen, getting some words from KJ Kindler again, like she always does. Reagan Smith, 11 10 0s on this event in her career. Not sure a 10 will be enough for Oklahoma the rest of the way. Reagan told me that coach goes through every skill with her, reminds her of her cues. Looked like Coach was telling her to take a deep breath and relax. Kat Lavasser, 9.1375. That is her low score. Siegfeld's 9.2875 will be counted. Final tumbling pass, double tuck. Reagan back handspring layout. Slight waver there. Reagan is a perfectionist. If she's in the gym and she has a small wobble like that, she will repeat it until she's happy with it. Watch the connection there. That was so good because she didn't stop moving her arms and her body. Leanne Wong, the final gymnast to hear for Florida in this rotation. Obviously with all of the chaos here tonight, John, I think coach Jenny Rowland actually put it best. She said, given the talent level in the NCAA, it truly can be anyone's day. She said, there's no offense, there's no defense. It's really a matter of who can stay true to themselves on the biggest stage. It's certainly been in effect tonight. Yeah, Florida just kind of quietly going about their business. Obviously not been perfect, but you just need one hit. Leanne Wong is certainly one of those that'll deliver. Double payout, dismount, beautiful. And I gotta give Reagan Smith credit for going up, hitting that beam routine, being so confident. That was a difficult position to be in. Really shows how mentally tough she was in that moment. Maya Hoot, Minnesota Golden Gopher here on vault. I saw Maya stick this vault cold in practice. Love the way that she rises her hips and slowly twists into the air. It looks so beautiful. Maya has been such a star athlete for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Outstanding on floor exercise where she's scored many a 10.0. Big 10 champ on vault as well in 23 and 24. Here comes Gabby Gladio, the anchor for Alabama here on this floor rotation. It's been a good one for them. Low score right now, 9.8625. What you'll notice about Gabby is the height that she gets on her tumbling passes. Pull in, doesn't need to grab her legs. Gabby Wilson in her third event of the day, competing here in the all around. I spoke to Gabby yesterday after practice and, and Gabby told me that the Oklahoma team welcomed her into the group with a gift basket. It's not easy coming to nationals as an individual because you're used to competing with your teammates. And being here alone, she said that the Oklahoma team has embraced her, cheering for her as if she's part of the team. On floor, pay attention to this last tumbling pass, the height that Gabby gets on this jump right here. So well controlled, and even gets one tenth bonus for that split jump at the end. Gabby, a sophomore for the Crimson Tide. And just an amazing athlete, besides being a great gymnast. Nice job there. Gabby now watch Wilson. this. Dismount, double tuck, so much difficulty. We don't see that level of difficulty on dismounts on beam in college. Give her credit and admire the risk she takes in doing that.
The Oregon State Beaver now, Jade Carey takes to her third event, the uneven bars, 9-9 on vault in the last rotation. Extremely difficult pack, full twist. We've seen a lot of pack salsas today, but not with that full twist. Full in. I like the way she twisted and flipped fast on that dismount. Jade has really been training an elite training schedule almost exclusively all season and then just competing her college routines on the weekend, which is tough to do, but really trying to make that Olympic team. Impressive. I talked to Jade about it and she said it's hard to balance both, but she feels that competing in college is helping her improve her elite gymnastics. Sierra Brooks now for Michigan on the floor exercise. Sierra Brooks, a graduate student, three-time Big Ten Gymnast of the Year. Head coach Bev Blocky in her 35th season as the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Certainly going to miss Sierra Brooks and Gabby Wilson. Routine. I gotta tell you, I'm super impressed with these individual athletes from Michigan. They look so prepared, look like they're peaking at the right time with skills like this full in. Difficult, most gymnasts have to pull to get more rotation. Doesn't even need to grab her legs front through to double tuck. So the top team, the Utah Utes, their head coach, Carly Dockendorf, and our Taylor Davis are together now. Taylor? Thank you, Don. Coach, you just said to me, this is sports. You've got the lead through three. What's your message to your team heading into the final rotation tonight? I mean, at this point, we just need to do our normal bar routines and just stay focused from the first routine up to the last routine and just do our, our normal work, and we're going to be okay. Two spots in the championship final remain. If it's your team at the end of this last rotation, what will it mean to the program? It'll, it'll mean a lot. Uh, we've been through a lot this year, and um, they've become such strong women, and their character is it's showing tonight. And um, it's going to mean a lot to them and their families and all of our fans that have been there supporting us this entire year. It's certainly been on display. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Go you. <laughs> Utah and Florida at the top right now, but the story has been the number one team in the country, maybe the most dominant regular season team in history. The Oklahoma Sooners are in third and a long, long way from making the finals. Through three rotations, Utah and Florida in the first and second spot respectively. Certainly not a surprise to see one of them in the top two. What we did not expect to see is Oklahoma in third, but not only in third, they are a million miles away from that second spot, Alabama in the fourth spot. Allie, how do you put into words a team that's been so dominant like the Sooners having the trouble they've had? They've counted three falls today. I think people underestimate how hard it is to be undefeated and ranked number one. I think we watch them week after week, we're in awe of them, but we forget that they're human and it is a lot of pressure. It's not easy to go up there knowing that everyone is expecting them to win. Really Utah or, and or Florida are gonna have to count a couple of falls really if Oklahoma wants to get back in this thing. Here's some of the highlights through this competition so far. Chinko one and a half, I think tried too hard to stick that landing. 
Not used to seeing so many under rotations from Oklahoma on. And on balance beam, Ava back handspring layout step out. That front foot was a little bit crooked. Couldn't correct herself. And then Kat Lavaster, this front aerial, that first foot that went down. Weren't exactly highlights, more like low lights. And someone who's down there in the, um, the belly of the beast where all the emotion <laughs> is taking place. I don't know if I want to be down there, wow. Taylor, but you know, you've got a ringside seat to this. What's going yeah. on? Uh, there's an element of shock in this arena, obviously, down here on the floor. Some teams elated, some teams incredibly disappointed. I asked one of the coaches, how do you keep your athletes focused on the task at hand with so much chaos going on? And they said, at some point, there's not much we can do. Everyone is aware of what is going on and how unprecedented this is. We've got one more rotation coming up. The last two spots for the NCAA Gymnastics Championship final on the line. Through three rotations, Utah in first throughout, wire to wire. It's what's happened behind them where the drama has taken place. Utah, Florida in those top two. Oklahoma third, Alabama fourth. Individual scores from that last rotation. Jake Carey, who's still in contention for the all-around with that 9.9 .9 on bars. Gabby Wilson having a nice day as well. Sierra Brooks, impressive 9.95 on floor. Not quite enough to get in the top spot there. In this final rotation, Oklahoma, they moved to floor exercise. Their worst event, Allie, they're ranked second on that one. First on all the other events, ranked number two in the nation on floor exercise. Alabama goes to vault, Utah on the uneven bars. Florida Gators go to balance beam. Certainly a big cushion, but is there a big enough cushion if you're going to beam is my question. This rotation is going to be interesting. As you mentioned, ending on beam is not easy. Keep in mind, it's late at night. In fact, Head coach Ashley Johnson said she was most concerned about this event right now, competing this late at night on vault. Jameson Sears will lead off this event. She can fly, big your chanko full. The way that her hips open is just stunning for longtime gymnastics fans. This reminds me of the 92 Olympic style gymnastics, the way that she opens her hips, gets that landing, it's beautiful. McKenna Smith will lead things off on bars, an event alley that They've had some trouble recently on this event. In the regional final, this team struggled a lot on bars, and this is an event that they're ending on right now. So I'm sure there's a lot of excitement and adrenaline. They're hoping, of course, to advance to the final, but they've got to stay focused. Skylar Drazer leading off for the Gators on beam. Freshman in the leadoff spot on an event. They are trying to clinch their spot in the NCAA finals. For the Florida Gators, a lot of people in the country might have thought when this season started, you're crazy. This isn't their year, but here they are. Impressive start for McKenna Smith on bars for Utah. Skyler, one of the gymnasts that has been critical for Florida. Very confident and consistent. Audrey Davis, the lead off here. All Oklahoma can do is perform do their best gymnastics. That's the only thing they have control of. And that starts with Audrey Davis. Great start for Florida on beam. Five more routines for Utah. Five more for Florida. They only need four hits. And they will advance. Chloe LaCourcier will be the next vaulter for Alabama. Jamison Sears, 9.8125. I'm excited to watch Jamison the next few years. She's a fun gymnast to watch. I am as well. We saw Coach Hunley talking to Chloe. Hunley told me that she asks Chloe anything that's not related to gymnastics, like, what's your dog's name again? That's when she does her best gymnastics, when she's not overthinking. Yurchenko, one and a half. Over-rotated a bit, but good vault for them. Remember that gymnast, she is going to be a fun one to watch. 
for Alabama in the years to come. Audrey Davis has been so important to this Oklahoma team as a leadoff. Hopefully gives this team some confidence going into this last event. McKenna Smith led off bars for Utah with a 9.9125. Skyler Drazer led off beam for Florida with a 9.9. .9. Sloan Blakely for the Gators. Ella Zerbus for Utah. Ella flying from the high bar to the low bar. Sometimes when you're nervous, you hold back a little bit. Ella's doing a good job of going big while also being able to control her skills. Sloan also staying confident on this event, attacking the beam. Zerbis with a hit. Just need three more now if you're Utah. The dismount. <laughs> One of the highlights, watching her celebrate after her routines. Sloan Blakely never short on emotion. When she hits, she lets you know it. And she should, that was fantastic. She'll be joined next year by her sister Sky Blakely in Florida. Sky trying to make the 2024 Olympic team this summer in Paris. Danielle Sievers now the second gymnast follows. Audrey Davis is 9.8875. Coach Kindler told me that Danny is the last one to leave the gym. Set such a good example for the rest of the team. Karis German on vault for Alabama. Yurchenko full out of a 9.95. Clean vault, clean landing. Just half a tenth on that little bounce on the landing. What's impressive about this choreography is the way that she's dancing. The choreography is tiring, and the fact that she's able to dance like that while also doing big tumbling and big leaps really shows the endurance that she has. One thing about the Sooners, they are not going to go quietly. They're going to just keep bringing it. Anya Pilgrim now on balance beam. What a start here for Florida. I said they needed three more hits. Really, with that margin they have, they do not need to have everyone hit. They've got room for a couple mistakes. Emily Morgan will be the third gymnast following a pair of scores in the 9-9s for Utah as well. On bars, this routine is packed full of difficulty. That full twisting pack salto. Same skill that we saw from Jade Carey. Another hit bar routine from Utah. I think they heard you talk about the mistakes they had at Regionals, Alley, and they're like, hey, Alley, watch this, because they are lights out so far through three. Sometimes when you make a mistake at a competition, you can take the silver lining from it and learn from it and grow. And clearly they took what happened at the Regional Final and are better because of it. And Anya Pilgrim, that routine, I just don't know if you can teach that as a, pre a freshman to have the calm energy that she has I want to ask her what her secret is. Reagan Smith, right hand of your screen for the Sooners, follows a 9-8-8-7-5, a pair of 9-8-8-7-5s. For Oklahoma, start Lily Hudson. On the left hand of your screen on vault. She's outstanding here. She's been perfect this year on this event. Watch how quickly Lily twists, especially in the second half. 
Wow. Wow. There you go. Reagan does that step kick out of the tumbling pass. It's smart because it's able to cover up if she takes a step out of that landing. The hope is to kind of distract the judges so they don't take off any steps on that landing. Victoria Wynn for the Gators, next to go. Anya Pilgrim, a 985. Less some unprecedented catastrophe hits the beam podium right now. Florida looks like they will be in the NCAA Finals. A noti into backhand spring. Very unique and difficult skill on beam. What I like about this beam routine is it's unique. A turn like that is an inward turn. Most gymnasts turn the other direction. Utah, similar to Florida, would take a monumental collapse at this moment, not to punch their ticket to the Saturday Finals. And they've got some veterans in the second half of the lineup. Miley O'Keefe, fifth-year senior, 17-time All-American. 2022 NCAA champion on the uneven bars as well. That routine from Victoria was probably the best beam routine I've ever seen her do. These Florida coaches have to be so happy with this rotation so far. Great handstand position from Miley on bars. The dismount in Arabian double front. Luisa Blanco now for Alabama. Follows Lily Hudson's 98875. For just joining us, cat catastrophe for Alabama on the balance beam, four falls, and that is where really the wind came out of their sails, but a strong finish since then. The one and a half, that was a good one because I could see on that last half, she had enough time and enough height to open up for that landing. Cat Lavasser now on floor, she size Reagan Smith, 975. Right before her. Tuck full in first pass. You can see the hugs on the left side of the screen. That is a collegiate career for Luisa Blanco. That is her final routine and what a career it has been. One of the best ever Crimson Tide athletes. She's not done though, competing for Columbia in the Summer's, summer's Olympic Games in Paris. Leanne Wong, left hand of your screen has got a chance to win the all-around, not just getting her team into the NCAA Finals, but she can pass Haley Bryant for the all-around title with a 9.9125 and can clinch it with a 9.95. Jade Carey also vying for that crown yet. Cap finishing with a very high straddle jump. And round off, double twist, dismount. Oh. <laughs> Great routine for Leanne. That I, dismount's gonna cost her just, I don't know. That's gonna cost that, her the all around title, Allie. You oh, don't wanna say it, but so I'll say close. it for you. She sticks that clean. She's probably the all around champ. She turned early, she took that step. It's not gonna be a 9-9, I don't believe. The competition is so tight and so close that it comes down to those little stuck landings. Grace McCallum, fifth gymnast here for Utah on bars. This is just a victory lap of sorts for the last two Utah gymnasts. Gabby Gladio on vault. <laughs> Big time, Yurchenko full. 
Grace McCallan full in dismount. And they're going to the finals. That is five hit routines for Utah. They didn't even need five and they would be punching their ticket, but they got five. They are going. Been 29 years, Allie. Wow. You weren't even alive then, all right? You know, I'm 29 now. There you go. It's an anniversary of sorts. They're going to celebrate Love your, it. <laughs> your 29th by. It's been 29 years since they've won a title. Now they're giving themselves a chance to do it again. Faith Torres on floor for, Ute, uh, for Oklahoma, rather, following Kat Lavasser's 9 9. Ellie Lazari follows Leanne Wong's 9 8 8 7 5. So it will not be an all around title for Wong. Wow. Big, Big double, double layout. Out. Oh, oh no. Oh, I hope she's okay. Hopefully, Ellie Lazari is okay. Certainly not going to speculate on what might be injured. But certainly we'll need her. Hopefully she is okay and compete in the finals for the Gators. Okay, finishing up with a double tuck dismount. You just saw this floor rotation from Oklahoma. You would never know what was happening. Ellie Lazari is okay, uh, and she's back on the beam. Wow. Tough. Impressive. And when you fall like that, I have to be honest, as a gymnast, it's also really scary. Sometimes you feel you're dead on the beam, and then you miss the beam like that. It can be really disorienting. It takes a lot of courage for her to get back up and finish this routine. The thing I've noticed about Beam, and thankfully I never had to compete it, but the difference between being perfectly on and off is razor thin. It really is. And I think sometimes people forget how dangerous gymnastics is because they make it look so easy. But on Beam, there really is no room for error if you breathe at the wrong time. Sometimes it makes you go crooked. And what a fabulous job of finishing that routine Truly. takes a lot of mental toughness to get back up after that that was fantastic didn't even need to get back up but love seeing her get back up there and finish certainly will build confidence oh, oh just completely looked like she missed that front foot when you're crooked like that even razor thin as you mentioned there's nothing you can do about it glad to see that she's okay and missed that foot and came down hard and yeah. fast Alani Sabato, the anchor for Utah on bars, and Sierra Brooks with her final collegiate performance here wow. on vault. <laughs> wow. Like the distance on that vault. Nine eight five from Sabado right here will clinch the team title here wow. in the semifinal. Double Probably layout. gonna get it. Not that winning this matters for a championship, but gotta feel good. Yeah, what a great competition that Utah and Florida has had. I'm impressed with the way that they've been able to handle the consistency. As Taylor mentioned, the other teams are aware of what's going on. So the fact they were able to stay in their own bubble and do their normal gymnastics, good for them. Going to be a huge confidence boost going into the finals. You said it. Florida and Utah, so much talk in the last couple hours about Oklahoma and the, the shock and awe of seeing them have mistakes. But Florida and Utah earned this. They came in and were methodical and hit and just went start to finish and took care of business. And sometimes that's all you need to do. Jade Carey on the left hand of your screen. She is still in contention for the all-around championship. A 9.975 will win the all-around. A 9.9625 for the tie. Otherwise, it's Haley Bryant's title. Jordan Bowers on the right hand of your screen, finishing things off for the Oklahoma Sooners. 
If you're watching Floor, pay attention to Jordan's eyes. Jade on beam is known for her consistency. Great control on that double pike for Jordan. This Oklahoma team should be proud of themselves for finishing this floor rotation well. They did it for themselves, did it for each other. Jay doing switch leap, switch leap half. Difficult combination there. Gets four tenths bonus for that. Just the dismount gainer full. What a good competition. Jade has had really showing off why she's in an Olympian. And she gave herself a chance right here. Is it enough though? 9.975, that's a big number. I didn't see any visible deductions in this routine. I'm curious what the judges are gonna do. Gainer full, stuck dismount. I imagine training the elite skills with so much difficulty has given her more confidence in this competition. Mara Tidar Soli from Missouri now. Talk about another gymnast that could win an event. She is fantastic on the uneven bars. I saw her go 10.0 in Missouri earlier this season. That first skill that she did was actually a mistake. She was supposed to put her legs on the bar right away, had to do an extra cast handstand. Another mistake here. Must be feeling a little bit off. Keep in mind, she's had to wait the entire rotation to go. Probably not warmed up anymore. Did a good job finishing strong. Fantastic gymnast. Part of the Dutch national team. She's from the Netherlands. Certainly not the day that the Oklahoma Sooners were hoping for, Allie. Yeah. Very surprising, but... that Unfortunately, that's sports. Is you never know what's going to happen. You can be number one undefeated but if you don't have a good competition florida gators and if you looked across that circle you saw trinity thomas who's helping coach the gators this season she knows all about being in the ncaa finals almost got the title last year against the sooners and now she'll have a chance to be there with her team as they get another shot here saturday gabby wilson now on floor exercise her last collegiate performance By the way, Jade Carey on balance beam, a 9.95, not enough. Haley Bryant will be your all-around champion. Like so many gymnasts, Gabby Wilson started the sport at age two. I asked her about that, said it's meant everything to her. And here she is in the last moments of her gymnastics career. Definitely an emotional one for her. First tumbling pass, the height that she gets. And let me tell you, in person, it looks even higher. In this last pass, she just drills it to the ground. That's my favorite part of the routine, that dance move. I'm going to work on that, actually. I got to loosen up my shoulders a little bit. Well, sports has it all. All the emotions wrapped up into one day of competition. For Alabama and Oklahoma, it's the agony of defeat. And for a team 
that has been a dominant like Oklahoma. Certainly a hard pill to swallow. Alabama thought they had a chance. They did. It was not their night, but it is for the Utah Utes and the Florida Gators. They have soared to the NCAA Finals. It is going to absolutely be a fantastic one. 3.30 Eastern time on ABC. The pre-show starts and the big show will be at 4 Eastern. Don't go away, though. We're going to wrap this thing up when we come back. I need a deep breath and some water. Somebody help me out, Allie. And it is final. The Utah Utes and the Florida Gators, they advance to Saturday's NCAA final. Oklahoma, the number one team in the nation, their dream for a three-peat has ended tonight. So there you go, LSU, Cal Bears, Florida Gators, and Utah Utes. Those will be the four teams that will vie for the title on Saturday. Taylor Davis is with the Oklahoma head coach, KJ Kenley. Taylor. Thank you, John. Coach, an unexpected ending to the season for you guys here tonight, but it doesn't take away from what this team has accomplished, setting records throughout this season. What do you want this team to be remembered for? Yeah, it wasn't as we scripted it, but, you know, we've taken great pride in winning, and we're going to take great pride in losing. This was character building yeah. for this team. They fought back hard, and um, it was emotional, and um, I give them all the credit for gutting it out through the whole end of it, and it was tough. It was tough. Not a situation that you're accustomed to being in, but what kind of response were you seeing from your athletes throughout this one? Very emotional response. Yeah. You know, they just, um, they were trying to put everything into it, but at the same time, you know, the emotions, I think, were taking over a little bit. Um, but I'm so proud of the way they bounced back. And this is an incredible team, one of the most consistent teams I have ever coached. Um, and so, you know, we'll just live to flip another day. I'm sure of it. <laughs> live to flip another day yeah. and like you said you've got a roster full of absolute rock star athletes some of whom do have the opportunity to return but if they don't what do you hope they took away from being a part of the Oklahoma gymnastics program I mean this program is special it's historic the traditions are unmatched I just I hope that they walk out proud with their you know chins up and loving every moment of it of their experience here it's been special to watch so far. What will be your message to them when you rejoin them? Yeah, I mean, we talked about finishing on our own terms on floor, and I think they did that, and we'll talk about that. But certainly characters built, like I said, and we'll talk about that because um, th these kind of things can only build you up. 100%. Yeah. You've been amazing to watch all season. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks. Well said. You're going to enjoy the winning. You got to have humility when things don't go your way, most certainly. Allie, that's the nature of gymnastics. It's very unforgiving. Yeah, it really is. I th you can see the devastation on their face. But as Coach Kindler said, I think that they danced their hearts out. They gave everything they had in that floor. And to be able to come back like that, I hope they remember that tonight. They get to put the stickers on the board. I'll tell you what. If they wanted to cut open a vein, head coach of the LSU Tigers and, and head coach of the Cal Bears, Justin Howell, Jay Clark and Justin Cal Howell, they'd be honest and say, I'm okay with Oklahoma not being in the final. Wouldn't you agree? The final is going to be tough. I cannot wait for Saturday to watch it. I'm so curious to see who's going to end up on top. It feels like it is more wide open than anyone thought it would be when the number one team goes down and... We've got four teams that are hungry and in a spot to bring home the national championship. So any thoughts, Allie, as we go into, you know, LSU's, they're the next highest ranked team, but we had all eyes on Oklahoma to advance. Does, does everybody turn now to LSU and say, hey, that's the team that's going to win it? Or have we learned our lesson in this competition that, hey, anything can happen? I think we learned our lesson. I think that whoever comes out on top on Saturday is going to come in, be the most calm, do their normal, which is so much easier said than done, and it's going to be the team that doesn't have a lot of mistakes. Here are your individual champions, Anna Roberts from Stanford. She gets the vault title. Audrey Davis, she gets a pair. She shares the bar and the beam title. 
Bars with Leanne Wong. Faith Torres also gets to share that beam title. Aaliyah Finnegan on floor. And Haley Bryant. She's been number one for most of the season. She gets the all-around title. Anya Pilgrim, the star freshman from the Florida Gators, is with Taylor. Thank you so much, John. Anya, your first year, and your team finds themselves in the final four at the NCAA Gymnastics Championship. What got you guys here this season? Gosh, a lot of hard work, <laughs> obviously, and then just building on what we've been doing each week and just improving from that, so clearly it worked. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, as we like to say. Your freshman year, you haven't just competed, you've consistently competed for this team. How have you acclimated to NCAA gymnastics so quickly? Honestly, after the first meet, I really understood what it was about, and then I could carry what I liked and what I didn't and take it through the rest of the weeks, which worked really well for me. And it's boded well for your team. A championship is on the line. One meet to go. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Feel the city breaking, everybody shaking, and Utah, Florida, LSU, and Cal, they're channeling their inner Bee Gees. They're staying alive, staying alive. They will be in the championship Saturday afternoon over on ABC and the ESPN app for all the action. It starts at 3.30 Eastern time with the pre-show. For Allie Raisman and Taylor Davis, I am John Roethlisberger. Thanks so much for watching. Coming up next, it's SportsCenter. So long from Fort Worth.